Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. The Black Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of fantasy. Inner Sanctum Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness's Retro Radio. Here I have the privilege of bringing you some of the best dark, creepy, and macabre old-time radio shows ever created. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, sign up for my free newsletter, connect with me on social media, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, visit other podcasts that I produce. You can also visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression, dark thoughts, or addiction. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into Weird Darkness's Retro Radio. What evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, The Death Triangle. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will be with you in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to remind you of a well-known fact. Coal colored blue means better heat at less cost. For when you buy blue coal, you're getting the cream of all Pennsylvania anthracite. The harmless blue coloring with which blue coal is trademarked is your guarantee of clean, even, safe, dependable heat all winter long. Such heat ensures the health of your entire household. So when you order coal... Specify Blue Coal. Ask for it by name. Phone your order to your nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. On this day, December 22nd, 1913, by order of the authority of Devil's Island, you, Pierre Martin are hereby sentenced to 100 days in confinement solitaire and a hundred lashes in the presence of the assembled prisoners as a warning to all who would attempt to escape. Let the punishment begin. I will find the devil who betrayed me. One. I will learn his name. Two. I will kill him. Three. I will find him. I will kill him. Four. I will kill him. Five, six, six, seven, Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program of organ music to bring you a special news flash from our affiliated press service. New York, December 12, 1937. The shadow has been found. Dr. James Evans, world-famous child surgeon, told reporters this afternoon that a wounded man who claimed to be the shadow forced his way into Dr. Evans' private clinic and at the point of a gun forced him to remove a bullet. 
the wounded man then revealed that he was none other than that mysterious character who has waged a one-man war against crime, the Shadow. Before Dr. Evans could report the case to the police, however, the Shadow mysteriously disappeared. The famous surgeon believes the Shadow has little chance of surviving his wounds. Our organ recital now continues. Hello? Dr. Evans speaking. <laughs> Dr. Evans, the man you claim to have operated upon was a fake. The real shadow has not been wounded. The shadow? You are the shadow? Yes, Dr. Evans. You don't seem surprised. I'm not. I've been hoping you'd get in touch with me. That statement I issued was false. False? Come now, Dr. Evans. A man of your high standing in the medical world does not issue false statements without very grave reasons. There was a very grave reason. I need your help. An old acquaintance of mine, Raymond Dubril, the financier, has received a death threat. Have him notify the police. No, he refuses to do that. Then let him take the consequences. Unless... Dr. Evans... Have you also received a death threat? Yes, I have. Before I made this call, I investigated your past, Dr. Evans. My past is a matter of public knowledge. You were once a political prisoner on Devil's Island. You escaped 20 years ago with three other men. Raymond Dubril, the banker, and Pierre Martin, the concert pianist. Yes, but our convictions were reversed by a high court a year after we escaped. I know it was proved that you three were innocent. But what about the fourth man who escaped with you? A murderer. Jacques Covey. He was caught and sent back to Devil's Island. After the escape, one of you betrayed him to the police. I don't believe that. Why else should he mark you for death? Then you know Covey escaped from Devil's Island a second time six months ago? Yes, Dr. Evans. Then you're interested. You'll help? Yes, I will help. But only because your life is in danger, Dr. The world can ill afford to lose the skill and genius that has saved the lives of countless children. You overestimate my important shadow, but will you help? Yes. When and where does Covey's warning say he will strike first? At Dubriel's Long Island Estate tonight. How do you know this warning came from Covey? Dubriel received a miniature music box in the shape of a coffin in the mail this morning. A musical coffin? Yes. And when the lid of the coffin is raised, the music box plays a tune... A tune Dubriel, Martin, Kobe, and myself whistled as a danger signal when we were planning our escape from Devil's Island. Where is Dubriel, Dr. Evans? At his Long Island estate. Martin is staying with him, and I am driving out there to spend the night. I had hoped you'd come and help. I will help you, Dr. Evans. Tell Dubriel and Martin that the shadow will be there tonight. Afternoon, Miss Lane. Is Mr. Cranston at home? Uh, no, Miss Lane, he's not. You know where I can reach him? Well, he may be at his club. No, I've tried there. Uh, his office? Yes, everywhere. Nobody's seen him all day. Oh, is there anything I can do? Uh, be sure and stay here in case he comes home. I'll call you on the phone later. Uh, yes, Miss. I've got to find him. I've got to. I've just got to. <laughs> Maybe Dr. Evans knows more than he told the newspapers. His office said he might be at home. Number 33. Yes, this is it. Oh, Lamont, I knew they'd shoot you someday. Yes, miss? Is Dr. Evans here? I must see him. I beg your pardon, miss, but are you another reporter? Yes, and I must see Dr. Evans. It's important. It's a matter of life or death. I'm sorry, miss, but Dr. Evans has nothing to say to the press. He's not at home. But I must see him. I must find him. I'm sorry. That car. That's Dr. Evans' car. Yes, miss. Where's he going? I'm not at liberty to say, miss. Never mind. I'll find out myself. Taxi. Taxi. Okay, miss. 
Me too. Follow that big black limousine, the one with the green cross on the license plate. That's a doctor's car, miss. I may have to break a lot of traffic laws if it goes through red lights. Never mind, I'll pay the fine. Don't lose sight of that car for a minute. Okay, lady, but this is going to be one fast ride. Driver, slow down. That car's turning in at that estate. You want me to do it? Go through the gates after? No, no. Stop here. Okay. Here's five dollars. Hey, thanks, man. I wonder if this is just a wild goose chase. Lamont couldn't be way out here. Not if he's wounded, dying. That car. It sounded like... Oh, but it couldn't be. It is. It's... It's Lamont. Lamont. Margot? Margot, what, what in heaven's name are you doing here? Oh, Lamont, then it wasn't true. You weren't shot. Dr. Evans didn't operate on you. Oh, oh so you heard that news flash, too. The papers are full of it. I tried to find you out the office, at home, at your club, everywhere. I'm sorry, Margot. I should have known you'd worry, but I've had a very busy afternoon. Uh, how did you get here? I followed Dr. Evans' car. He just drove through those gates. What's happening, Lamont? Are you trying to find out why he said he operated on the shadow? Is, is someone impersonating you? No, uh, Dr. Evans did that, knowing I'd get in touch with him. He needs my help in a very special manner. But why? Is someone after him, threatening him? Yes, also the owner of this estate, the banker Dubril and Martin, the concert pianist. And you're going to help them? I'm interested in helping Evans. He's a great doctor and a great humanitarian. His life is in danger. Lamont, now that I'm here, is there anything I can do? Yes, Margot, wait in my car. Keep your eye on the house. If you see a light go on and off twice in one of the windows, drive to the nearest payphone and notify the state police to come to the debris estate. I'll watch for the signal. Fine. I suppose there's no use my asking you to be careful. No, Margot, but uh, I'll try. I'll try to avoid really putting Dr. Evans to the trouble of removing a bullet from the shadow. <laughs> Gabriel, stop pounding on the table and cursing Covey. Oh, that's all very well for you to say, Evans. Your turn hasn't come, but it will. If we three sitting here, you or me or Martin, don't get Covey when he comes here tonight, you will be the next on his list. You or Martin. Uh, don't concern yourself about my fate, Gabriel. I am not afraid of Covey. Oh, you'll change your mind if he manages to kill me, Martin. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to die. What do you think, Gabriel? Or do you ever think of anything but your fat stomach and your money? I, you... Gentlemen, this is no time to argue. I have something more important to tell you. What is it, Evans? I hear you had quite an experience today. Operated on this man who calls himself the Shadow. Yes. That's what I want to talk to you about. Ah, there's a man, Dubril, the Shadow. He might save you from Covey. Ah, uh, what could he do? I've had the best private detectives in the country trying to find some trace of Covey ever since he escaped from Devil's Island again six months ago. By the way, Dubril, I've always wondered who tipped off the police when Covey was hiding after he helped us escape 20 years ago. Covey was a murderer. We were innocent men. And also, who betrayed me, Dubril, the time I tried to escape alone the first time? Matt, time, Dubril, now listen to me. A moment ago, we were talking about the shadow. Well, he isn't dying. I didn't operate on him. I announced that, hoping the real Shadow would get in touch with me. And did he? Yes. And he's coming here tonight to help us. I've always been curious to see this Shadow. You won't see him. No man has ever seen him, but he'll be here. Oh, Evans, for a man of intelligence, you're talking like a fool. The age of ghosts and mystic presences is... You're past. wrong, Gabriel, you're wrong. Because I am a doctor, I can readily accept the fact that the Shadow is a master of the powers of mental suggestion, of mass hypnosis. Recent experiments have proven conclusively that... Uh, rubbish. <laughs> Allow me to convince him, Dr. Evans. Uh, wh what was that? Who spoke then? The shadow, Dubril. You do not accept the theory of my power of invisibility. But perhaps you will accept the fact. For I am here. Sit down, Dubril. You look rather pale. If I am to help you... You will all sit down. Sit at that table there. I understand there is little time to lose. I must know the whole story. The truth, if I'm to help you. Do as the shadow says. Sit there, Matt. And you, there, Dubril. Well, why don't you talk back, Dubril? Be quiet, Martin. Dr. Evans, I will help you if I can. But there is one gap in the chain of events leading up to this moment. 
I'll tell you anything I know, Shadow. Then tell me this. When and under what circumstance did Covey first threaten your lives? It was the last day we spent in the open boat in which we escaped from Devil's Island, 20 years ago. Storms had blown us off our course. Our food was gone. Our water was exhausted. Covey, the only one who knew how to navigate, was... Well, he was slowly dying from hunger and thirst. I can still remember his cry. Water. Water. Oh, be quiet, Covey. There is no water. The cask is empty. You're lying, Dubril. All of you. You've been drinking my share. Give me that bucket. Give me a drink of that mud. Don't let it Don't let it Salt water will kill it. Oh, what does it matter, Dr. Evans? Seventeen days in this open boat. Nights of storm and days of blazing heat. Water. Water. I'm dying, I tell you. Dying. You're not giving me my share. You're stealing my water. Where will you be if I die? I'm the only one that knows navigation. Be patient, Kobe. It may rain tonight. Uh, we might as well be back on Devil's Island. At least there was bread and water there. Bread? Bread? A crust? Just a crust of bread and water? Water? There's no bread, Kobe. The last crust went three days ago. You're cheating me. Killing me. You only brought me along to steer the boat. Now you're starving me to death. You don't want me to live. But I will live. I'll get you for this. I live to kill every one of you for this. You, Dubril. You, Martin. You, Evans. Oh, shut him up, Evans. You're a doctor. You know what to do. Look. Look, Dubril. Look. Figo. Oh, what does it matter if we have no gun? I know, but don't you see? The gulls never go far from land or a ship. Oh, you, you're right, Evans. Look. Look to the west. It's land. Land at last. All right. There, to the southwest. You can see the sun of the mountains. We're sane. Free at last. Come back, come back. Sit up, sit up. Look, look. We've sighted land. There'll be food and water plenty for everybody. You tried to kill me. Starve me to death. But I'm going to live. I'm going to live until the last one of you is dead. 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 Yes, we threatened all three of us. And so you see, that's how it all began. And now Covey is free and out to get us, Shadow. But what makes you so sure... It is Covey. Well, it couldn't be anyone else. It's Covey, all right. He sent you real that thing on the table. That oblong box? Yes, Shadow. Notice its shape. It's a miniature coffin, beautifully carved. Covey was a woodcarver. He was always handy with a knife. But still, it does not follow that he was the one. Except for one thing, Shadow. When the lid of the coffin is raised, it's a music box. And that tune it's playing was a warning signal we used while planning our escape from Devil's Island. Remember, only the four of us knew it. You, Briel, Covey, Evans, and myself. Oh, stop it, Evans. Stop that cursed thing. Stop it, I tell you. I can't stand it. <laughs> so you have a conscience, eh, Dubril? That danger refrain recalls the past, doesn't it? Stop talking about it. It looks as though Covey meant business, doesn't it? Don't sit there conniving over me. You forget your turn, maybe next, maybe tonight even. I am not forgetting anything, Dubril. You better study yourself, Dubril. I'll get you a drink. Oh, never mind. Here's the decanter. I'll pour it myself. Oh, that tune! Where is it coming from? I smashed the coffin. Good heavens, Dubril! It's the decanter in your hands. Oh, someone, someone changed the decanter. Covey, he did it. He's here. He's been in his house tonight. You mean where he goes? To my room. I don't trust anybody. I'd be safe there behind locked doors, alone. And if Covey comes, I'll be ready for wait, him. Wait, Covey, wait. Let him go, Dr. Evans. But he shouldn't be left alone. Covey may carry out his threat. Are you sure it is, Covey? What do you mean? It must be. It couldn't be anyone else. The coffin, the decanters are his warning. I know. But you said the four of you knew the signal. Are you sure it isn't one of you? Well, of course not. I thought you said the shadow was here to help us. I am. But I am content to let events lead themselves to a logical conclusion. You mean you won't use your power to save us from him? I shall use my power at the moment it is required, Dr. Evans. Right now, for instance. Look on the table. Huh? There's a note where the decanter was standing. Good heavens. Kobe has been here. Listen to this, Martin. You are the first. And you will die tonight, Raymond Dubril.
Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will return in a moment. There are thousands of families living around snowbound Buffalo today who are as snug as a bug in a rug thanks to blue coal. You have read how the whole city of Buffalo has been literally snowed in. In that entire area, business practically came to a standstill for several days. But those families who laid in their supply of blue coal kept comfortable. The icy, biting winter blowing outdoors made no difference to them. These storms are reported to be coming eastward, so take a tip and get ready. Put in a supply of blue coal tomorrow. It is the most economical fuel that you can use. Furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in New England were designed to use anthracite. And blue coal is America's finest anthracite. Blue coal is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company and is especially prepared for home use. It is available in all domestic sizes, egg, stove, chestnut, and pea. Every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and sizing before shipment from the mine. Blue coal burns steadily and evenly, sending a full supply of heat to the living quarters of your home, even in the most severe weather. Get set for winter tomorrow by ordering blue coal. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Gabriel, wake up. I have come for you. <laughs> so you've come, Covey. Oh, you poor deluded fool. Do you think I'd let you kill me in my sleep? I've been awake, waiting here in the dark for you to come. <laughs> a little light helps. <laughs> so you've grown a beard since I saw you last, Covey. And your hair is gray. That gun in your hand won't save you, Dubril. If I die, I will take you with me. Listen, Covey. I didn't steal your food in the open boat. I swear it. No? You also betrayed me to the police. You told them where to find me. And I am not the only one you betrayed, am I, Dubril? You betrayed Martin the time he tried to escape alone, didn't you, Dubril? Yes, yes, but what do you care, Corvée? He wouldn't take me with him. But I did not betray you. Have you paid Martin for those hundred lashes and those hundred days of bread and water he got because you betrayed him? Oh, he doesn't know. He will never know it was I. Dubril, you remember how we passed the long days in that open boat... Throwing knives. Don't raise that knife, Covey. We got so good, we seldom missed. I'll shoot if you move. But Martin was the best. You may shoot me, Dubril, but my knife won't miss. Covey, wait, wait a minute, Covey. I will make a deal with you. Listen, Covey. You're out to get Evans and Martin, too. If you throw that knife, I'll shoot you and you will never get them. Oh, you would help me kill Evans. I know he's here in the house. Yes, 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 sir. I hate Evans and Martin, too. I will help you get them. <laughs> so... You would betray Dr. Evans to save yourself, to Dubriel. The shadow. Covey, don't be afraid. He's only a man. By some trick, he can make himself invisible, but he's flesh and blood. Quick, lock the door. We'll deal with him first. He won't get out. Now, now, shadow. What can you do to stop us? Speak up. I dare you to speak. Listen where his voice comes from, Dubriel. Then shoot quickly. No, no, no. The shot would bring Evans and Martin. Throw your knife, Covey. Make him speak. I won't miss... Speak up, Shadow. We will find you anyway. You can't get out. I am here in the corner. In the far corner. Throw your knife, Covey. I heard it. <laughs> oh, you missed. But he was there. No. Only my voice was there. Ventriloquism. He's there in front of you, Dubril. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> yes, I will shoot now. Yes, I will shoot. But not the shadow. He came here to help us catch you, Kobe. And he has your knife. It's gone. Now, Kobe, you are helpless. And now I'll deal with you. Oh, you treacherous snake. You fool. You think I carry only one knife? This one is for you. <laughs> oh, you... Damn it! But uh, I take you with me, Kobey. Dubriel, 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 hold the door. Dubriel, Dubriel, Dubriel. Dubriel is dead, Doctor Evans. Dead? Kobey's kept his word. Where is he? Look there, on the floor by the window. Kobey. That Cohen? Dubriel tried to save his life by promising to help that man kill you. Dubriel? Dubriel offered, offered to help Cohen kill me? Look closely, Dr. Evans. Remove the gray wig and the false beard. Wig? 
Yes. It's Martin. Yes. Martin disguised as Covey. He's still alive, breathing. Get away from me, Evans. Don't touch me. I hate you. I hate you both. Why did you do this, Pierre? Why? I hated you, Breer, because he betrayed me on Devil's Island. I hated you, Evans, because you have got the things that I always wanted. Success, fame, glory. It was I sent the musical coffin. The warning note. I knew you'd think it was Kobe. I've got you, Breer, but Kobe will get you, Evans. He is after you. He will get you. He will kill you. He will... Mother, mother! Stop breathing. Dead. Yes, Dr. Evans. He is dead. You are quite safe now. You forget Covey. No, Dr. Evans. I knew, even when I phoned you today, that it was not Covey who sent the musical coffin. What? I knew it was not Covey. It had to be Martin or Dubriel. Why didn't you stop them? Martin and Dubriel were both criminals plotting to kill you. If I'd stopped them, your life would have been in danger as long as they lived, hating you always for having attained the things that life denied them. But you forget, Shadow. Covey may find me. Succeed where Martin fails. Never. I learned the whole history of all of you before I saw you. Yes? Everything, Dr. Evans. Your escape from Devil's Island after Dubriel's betrayal of Martin that resulted in the hundred lashes and his resolve for vengeance. And from the authorities at Devil's Island, I learned the truth about Covey's last escape. Yes, I see now. I see now why he hated us. But what about Covey? You are safe now, Dr. Evans. Safe from Covey. The chain of logic is complete. Three months ago, a bleach skeleton was found on a deserted beach at Trinidad. It has just been identified as the body of Covey. Before we tell you of the Shadow's next exciting adventure, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's famous heating expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Good evening, friends. While you're doing your Christmas shopping, why not get a gift for your own home? Something will not only make it a cheerier, happier place in which to live, but also make it easier to run. To my mind, the perfect gift for any home is a blue coal heat regulator. This marvelous thermostat provides the last word in comfort. For example, there's no running up and down stairs to open and close dampers. The blue coal thermostat does that tiresome job automatically. Keep your home at just the temperature you want... From morning till night. It can be attached to any kind of heating equipment. Steam, hot air, hot water, even a parlor heater. And it'll give you more uniform heat, more economical heat than you can get with the most expensive oil burner. In fact, this blue coal heat regulator will completely modernize your present heating equipment. And yet it costs only $18.95 plus a small installation charge. You'll be amazed at the amount of fuel it saves you. So this Christmas... Give your family the gift of a lifetime, a blue coal heat regulator. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to give you complete information regarding it. Phone him tomorrow. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's good advice. Make this Christmas a memorable one by having a blue coal heat regulator installed in your home. You'll save it small cost time and time again in fuel consumption. And you'll make your home a happier, healthier place in which to live. So don't wait. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. And at this time, may we remind you to mail your Christmas presents and cards early to secure delivery before December 24th. There will be no post office service on December 25th. (laughs) The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. (laughs) <laughs> 
Road dogs, Billy Big Rigs, Big Strappers, Flatbed Cowboys, Freight Shakers, Trucklets, 18 Wheelers, Deadheads, Yard Dogs. Got your ears on? Whatever you call yourselves or whatever call sign or moniker is thrust upon you, this episode's dedicated to all you truckers driving the boulevard, keeping our bellies full, shelves stocked, septics cleaned, and brains entertained with what you're hauling. In the eyes of this ratchet jaw, and I'm honored to have you listening. Maybe once in a while grab your CB, head to Sesame Street, and tell other drivers how to join this weirdo convoy. Appreciate it. May your brake checks be few, your shutter trouble be absent, and your bear bites non-existent. Keep it cool on the stool. This is Spooky Santa, and I'm 10 and on the side. who strikes terror in the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the League of Terror. Ladies and gentlemen, the Shadow's exciting adventure starts in just a moment. But first, I'd like to ask you homeowners a question. Do you want to cut down winter colds, protect your family's health during this dangerous winter season? Then burn blue coal for clean, safe, healthful heat all winter long. Blue coal is Pennsylvania's finest anthracite, and its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when it comes to fuel, insist on blue coal. Order it by name. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. With the court's permission, I'll rephrase that question. Mr. Sullivan, do you know how these counterfeit one and five dollar bills came to be in the cash register of your grocery store? I, I got them from customers, I guess. Michael Sullivan, you're a witness in a federal trial. Under oath to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. You know you can be sent to prison for perjury? Yes, I know it well enough. Before this trial began, you testified that the defendants in this case, Slater and Marino, entered your store. But they forced you to buy counterfeit five and ten dollar bills to be passed out and changed to your unsuspecting customers. Why have you changed your testimony? Why? I was mistaken, that's all. You're lying, Michael Sullivan, lie. Order, order in the court. Mr. Prosecutor? Yes, Your Honor. It is quite apparent that your witness has received a threat either to himself or his family, if he testified against the defendants in this case. Since he will not repeat his sworn testimony against these defendants, I have no alternative but to dismiss the charges. Case dismissed. Oh, I wonder if Order, order in the court. Your Honor, I demand that Michael Sullivan be held on a charge of perjury. Michael Sullivan, much as this court may sympathize with your reasons and motives for shielding these criminals who prey upon an unsuspecting public in the wholesale commerce of worthless counterfeit money, I have no alternative but to sentence you to one year in prison. Oh, one year in prison? But, Your Honor, there's my wife and my daughter, Mary. I'm afraid of what the dirty rats would do to them if I told the truth. I'm sorry, Michael Sullivan, but unless you testify... I can't. I tell you, I can't. No, sir. The sentence of one year in prison must stand. Court's adjourned. Oh. It ain't fair. It ain't right. I get a year in prison for trying to protect my family and the real crooks go free. Look at them walking out of court free as the air to go on with their dirty business. Yeah, it's a good thing for his daughter Mary that Sullivan took my warning. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay, boss. <laughs> Lamont, of all the unfair, unjust sentences. I know, Margot. It seems cruel, harsh, but our whole legal system is being undermined by violence and intimidation of witnesses. Isn't there something you could do, Lamont, some way of helping Michael Sullivan? Sullivan isn't the only one who is suffering from the operation of this counterfeit ring. Small businessmen, shopkeepers, 
poor people who can't afford to get bad money. A counterfeit dollar bill probably means the difference between eating and not eating to a lot of those people over in Sullivan's yeah, Exactly, Margot. This is operating among the poor people who can't defend themselves. Lamont, are you going to another case as the shadow? Well, later perhaps. Right now, Margot, Lamont Cranston and Margot Lane can help by doing a little shopping in Michael Sullivan's grocery store. <laughs> How's little Maria? Oh, she's sick. All the time she cries. Oh, what's the matter? I don't know. The doctor he says she don't get enough to eat. I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, Lady Canby, help me, Sullivan. Oh, I'm mighty sorry they send your papa to jail because he, well, he won't talk now. Father would have talked. He ain't afraid. Not for himself. He was afraid of what they do to mother and me. How is your mother? Not so well. She's been sick all along, and now with father in prison. She can't understand it. I'm afraid for her. She's so sick. Mm-hmm. Well, none of us don't understand. We're all afraid. Well, I'm not. I've got father's gun here under the counter. And if any of that counterfeit gang comes around here again, I won't depend on the law to protect me. You know, no, me, Sullivan. You can't fight them. They're too many. Well... There'll be a couple less if they bother us again. Hush, Maria. Oh, hush, you can be a new baby. No, no. Miss Sullivan, you have so much trouble. I don't like to bother you, but what is it, Mrs. Giovanni? Uh, the landlord, he say that $5 bill that Mr. Sullivan gave me, it's no good. He say I got to pay the rent and do the money or get out. Please, he give it back to me. Another card of the bill, huh? I'm sorry, Mrs. Giovanni. Give it to me. Here. Here's a good bill. At least I think it is. A counterfeit bill is so good you can hardly tell us, folks. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Well, here we are, Margot. I'll be with you in just a moment. Well, thank you. If you hear of anyone else who has any of these bad bills Father had to give out, let me know, Mrs. Giovanni. I'll make them good if it takes every cent we got. Oh, bless you, miss. Well, goodbye. You be mighty careful, Miss Sullivan. I will, Mrs. Giovanni. Good night. Good evening. What do you want? I think a couple of cans of corn and string beans. And a loaf of bread. Yes, and some butter. You're strangers in this neighborhood? Uh, yes, and get some peaches. Yes, two large cans of peaches. Strangers don't come way over here in this section to buy groceries. Who are you, and what do you really want? The Sullivan put away that gun. You're a courageous, but a rather foolish young woman. Well, maybe so. But I got only myself to think of. I'm not like Dad, afraid because he had a family. Please, Miss Sullivan, we're not members of the counterfeit ring that's been terrorizing your father. How do I know that? If we were members of that ring, Miss Sullivan, you would have been shot long before you could get that gun. It's very obvious. Well, what do you want? For appearance's sake, in case this store is being watched, you'd better give us the groceries we ordered. All right. What was it now? Corn, spring beans, and peaches. Here's the corn. Who are you, newspaper reporters of the police? Would you like to save your father from that year in prison? Yes, anything. It's killing my mother. There's a man watching the door across the street in the doorway. I expected as much. Who are you? How can you save my father? Yes, sir. Now, the other things. Keep moving. But listen to me. Yes, sir. You're a brave girl, Miss Sullivan, but your life won't be worth one of those counterfeit bills unless you use your head. What do you mean? Do you know enough about this counterfeit ring, how they operate, who they are, to make them fear you will talk? know how they operate, but Slater and Marina are the only ones who ever came here. Slater and Marina will be out of the picture for the present. Don't stand there. Get me things. Anything at all. Make a package. My father never saw anyone else either. None of the big shots. I'll put this stuff in a paper bag. There's two men in that doorway across the street now, Lamont. Let me know if they start this way. Now, Miss Sullivan, I can't tell you who I am or exactly why I'm here, except that I was in court today. I want to help you. I can if you're willing to take a great risk to help your father. I'll do anything for Dad. If I don't get him out, I'm afraid my mother will die. If I only know who's behind Slater and Marino, who's that boy? You can find out. But you know what happens to those who know too much. 
I'll take that risk. How can I find out who they are? By pretending to know more than you do. I don't understand. Those men across the street will undoubtedly come in here in the minute we leave. They'll question you. Pretend you know how they operate. Yes. That you want to be paid to keep quiet. The chances are they'll take you to a higher up. Maybe not the ringleader, but someone who knows the real leader. But Lamont, they'll kill her. Not until they find out how much she knows and who else shares that knowledge. Anyhow, I don't care. It's only fair to warn you. You're taking a desperate chance. What have I got to lose? They'll probably try to put me out of the way anyhow. The whole neighborhood knows how I feel about him. I said I'd kill him for what they'd done to my father if I ever found out who they were. Those men are starting this way. You've got to go, Miss Sullivan. Better think over what I've said before you act. Oh, no, I'll do it. My mind's made up. Come on, Margo. Lamont, aren't you letting that poor girl take a terrible risk? Margo, that girl was marked for death before we came here. What are we going to do? Look, Lamont, those men, they're going in the store. Margo, get a taxi and get out of this district. Be sure you're not followed. Go to my office and keep the shortwave radio tuned in on the band I always use. All right, Lamont. But won't you tell me what you're going to do? There's no time, Margo. I've got to see where they take her. From now on, the fate of Mary Sullivan is in the hands of the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, the shadow will be back with you in just a moment. In the meantime, I'd like to tell you some interesting facts. In the Dominion of Canada, where there is a temperature range of almost 200 degrees, from warm summer days to frigid Arctic nights, the selection of fuel is a serious problem. And the tremendous popularity of blue coal in Canada under these varying conditions is positive proof that blue coal gives steadier, healthier, more dependable heat than you can get with any other fuel. You homeowners here in the United States should be just as critical in the selection of your fuel. And when you choose blue coal, you'll find you're getting better heat at less cost. For blue coal is a selected Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that burns longer, more economically, down to a fine powdery ash. What's more, anthracite is the fuel that furnaces parlor stoves and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn. And the finest anthracite in America is blue coal. It's mined by the famous Glen Alden Coal Company. And every carload is tested and retested for purity and uniform size before shipment. Blue coal is especially prepared for home use. It comes in all the popular domestic sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, and pea size. So solve your problem of home fuel selection by placing your order for blue coal tomorrow. Ask for it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer the first thing in the morning. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Where are you taking me? Shut up. Get in, kid. Sit down and keep quiet. Come on, come on. Get up, sister. Here, I'll take the blindfold off your eyes. Why'd you bring me down to the waterfront? I do as I'm told. You better learn the same thing. Where are you taking me? Maybe this is the end of the line for you, Mary Sullivan. You... You wouldn't. I wouldn't, we, though. But not without orders from the big boss. What do you know about the big boss? Plenty. Then your number is up all right, kid. And there's no plenty about the big boss don't live long. You're still alive. Yeah, sure. Because I don't even know who the big boss is, and I don't want to know. It ain't healthy. Trigger. Who's that? It's me, Rankin. You got the Sullivan thing? Yeah. Here she is. So I see. She's a nice looker. Listen, Rankin, she says she knows plenty about the big boss. I'll say I do. You're a liar, Mary Sullivan. But you do know too much about the rest of us. You better get in touch with the big boss before you do anything to me. We don't bother him with all the details of this counterfeit racket. Well, you better bother him about this. And you know, Rankin, I think she knows something. Shut up, Trigger. I'll do that thinking around here. Maybe she does at that. I know plenty. And I'm not the only one. Say, what happened to that fellow in Dame that was in a Sullivan grocery just before we snatched her? The guy got cleaned away somehow. Yeah, what about the Dame? Yeah, she took a cab. Smitty trailed him and she gave him a slip. 
switch cabs in traffic somewhere. Maybe you better take this kid to the big boss. Not till I find out how much she knows. Come on, Strick, make a talk. You know how. All right, kid. Do you spill what you know, or do we have to get it out of you the hard way? Let go of my arm. I won't talk to anybody but the big boss. And he'll pay me plenty to keep quiet. You can't scare me like you did my father. <laughs> she wants Joe to keep quiet. Shut up, Trigger. Twist her arm. Give her a sample of what's coming to her if she don't talk and talk fast. All right, kid. You ask for it. No, 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 I won't. Hey, you dope. She's fainted. I guess I twisted her arm too hard. <laughs> hey, Rankin, did you hear that? Okay, yeah, I did. What was it? The trap. The cops must have followed us here. Come on, let's take it on the lamp. No. no. Wait, we can't be that dame here. You take us all up and kid, I'll shoot out the light. Don't draw your gun, Trigger. Don't move, Rankin. He knows who we are. That's right. There's something story about this. That voice, it's right here, but there ain't nobody with it. You're mistaken, Rankin. There is someone here. What kind of gag is this, Rankin? I don't see nothing, but it's... I'm getting hot in here. Wait, Trigger. Trigger. Do you remember Lefty Sin? Sure. The best thing a man in the east, but... He tried to shoot it out with a voice. The police got him. But when he went to the chair, there was only one name on his lips. Remember? The shadow, Mark. That's what it is. It ain't the police or the feds. It's the guy nobody's ever seen. The shadow. They say things are sort of spell over the guy's mind so you can't see him. Shut up, you crazy. Yeah, it's just somebody throwing his voice. I've seen him do it in Fordville. Come on. You pop that light in his brain. Wait. I'm not going to stop you. But before you go, take this message to your leader. You better listen to him, Rankin. You can't outsmart that guy. Nobody ever has, not for long. Tell the man who controls this counterfeit ring that preys on the poor and helpless. Tell him that if anything should happen to Mary Sullivan, he will answer to the shadow. Say, he's right in front of us somewhere. Take a couple of pot shots. Maybe you can get him. No, not me. Can't you see the shadow set to shake down the big boy? If you won't shoot, I will. I'll get him even if I can't see him. A gun won't help you, Rankin. Oh, no. We'll see about that. Uh, yes. You gotta talk about luck. Yeah. Well, let's get going while our luck's still good. I don't know if I killed him or not, but I must have winged him. Come on. Grab that Sullivan Dame and let's get back to the big boss and tell him what's happened. Yeah, how? Where are we going? I got a speedboat waiting under the wharf. Come on. We're heading down the bay. Sullivan Dame to his hideout. Yeah, I hate to think about it. You're about to steal the boat. You watch that Sullivan Dame. She ought to be coming too by now. Yeah, she's coming out of it. And hey, how much farther we got to go? Yeah, we're practically there. You see that yacht laying at anchor out there? Oh. You mean that, that's the big boss hideout? Yeah, it's right. You're finding out something you're liable to wish you never heard about, much less seen. Yeah. You mean that's the plant, huh? That's where all the phony toes been coming from. You catch on quick, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. That's the layout the feds and cops have been looking for for months. Flashy, ain't she? All right, here we are. Get that Sullivan down on the feet. Yeah, okay. Uh, but how about me staying in the speedboat? That's been doing. You're coming aboard and tell the big boss what you know about this shadow. Uh, nobody knows much about you it. You better spill what you do know and spill factory. The big boss is ahead of this racket because he can think faster than you can shoot. If he gets any idea you're learning the shakedown, you're as good as dead. I ain't pulling no double cross. I swear I ain't like Shut up and bring that dame aboard. Boss knows how to handle her kind. Watch your step or you'll get what's coming to her. Okay, okay. Come on, sister, come on. Before the night's over, I got a hunch you and me are going to wish we'd never seen this ritzy tub. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Listen carefully. Act quickly. The life of the Sullivan girl depends upon it. Telephone Police Commissioner Weston. Have him notified.
notify the harbor patrol boats that they will find the leader of the counterfeit ring on board the large yacht anchored off Diamond Point. Hurry. Listen, boss. No, you listen to me. I warned you never to come to this yacht without order. But, boss, I had to... What's the idea of bringing Sig and that Sullivan girl here? You know what happens to those who break the rules of my organization? I couldn't help it, boss. This is important. She ain't seen anything. I locked her in one of the cabins. I decide what's important. Why didn't you report first? There wasn't time. I was going to report, but then this shadow started talking to us in the warehouse. The shadow? Yeah. You tell him, Sig. Never mind. I've heard all about the shadow. So he's on the trail, eh? Yeah, to shake down, boss. Shut up and listen to me. The shadows behind this is no shakedown. What is his racket? Putting organizations like mine out of business. Putting fools like you and Trigger in the electric chair. Yeah? Well, he won't. Because I got him back in the warehouse. You you what? Yeah, boss. I just took a couple of wild shots at where the shadow's voice was coming from. And we heard him fall. Uh, how do you know that fall wasn't a trick? How do you know he didn't follow you here? No boat trails. No, I suppose it didn't occur to you that he might have been hiding in the speedboat with you. Where's that Sullivan girl? Bring her in here. I'll get her, boss. She's locked in the next cabin. Rankin, you're a fool. You let Trigger and the Sullivan girl in on something they're not likely to forget. And you know what to do. Take care of them. You mean fix them so they won't talk? Permanent? Do you know of any other way? But listen, boss. The Shadow said if anything happened to Mary Sullivan, you'd answer to him. You leave the Shadow to me. <laughs> the Shadow? He ain't dead. I didn't kill him. That is a reasonable assumption, Rankin. Boss, see, he's here in this cabin. I see my presence is accepted without question. Even though you can't see me. Rankin, shoot, you fool, shoot. Yes. Try again, Rankin. All right, Shadow. Maybe I won't miss this time. <laughs> hey, Rankin, what's up? Rankin. Try again. The door is getting out. First trigger, shoot. Rankin, shoot. Get out of the way, Trigger. <laughs> Rankin, you rat. You double-crossed rat. <laughs> Tell me for the legs, will you? Rub me out because I think too much, will you? Torch, Rankin. Put down that jet. I wasn't shooting at you. It was a shadow. It was here just a minute ago. I care about the shadow. All I know is I got a load of lead in me. Your lead, and I'm going to... Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Too bad, Rankin. Too bad. Couldn't have polished me off like I did him. Quick and easy. Trigger. Shadow. Trigger. That man there. The big boss. Ordered Rankin to kill you. Trigger, he is your real enemy. Yeah, yeah. I had a notion he might try it. Don't raise that gun, Trigger. Yeah, I know that one. If I do, you'll kill me. You can't kill a guy with as much lead as I'm carrying. You can't kill a guy that's already dead. Perhaps not, but I can't avoid the risk that you have strength enough left to raise that gun. <laughs> You're a better shot than Rankin. Big shot. Better shot, big shot. Not bad. Not a bad gag. And now, we are alone. Yes. Yes. Quite alone. And now, I'm going to deal with you, Shadow. Your hand is shaking. Is that the way for a mastermind to act? You devil. If I could only see you. But you won't get away. And neither will you. I've notified the police. Their boats are coming. Listen. Oh, oh so, so that's it, eh? Yes. That's it. They're coming to get the leader of a counterfeit ring. But they will find a murderer. A cold-blooded killer. Locked in this cabin with his victim. <laughs> That's what you think, but you're mistaken. Why are you putting down your gun? Are you giving up so easily? Listen, Shadow, I've heard a lot about you. You're clever. Well, I'm clever, too. Clever enough to know when the game is up. I've anticipated just such an eventuality. <laughs> I suppose you can see this little switch on my desk. My hand's resting on it. Yes. Yes, I see it. You know what will happen if I close this switch? And I will if the police set foot on this yacht. 
I think I can guess. Well, I'll tell you. This switch will set up a charge of high explosive down in the hole that will blow you and me and the police to kingdom come. I see. If you touch me, try to stop me, I'll throw the switch. What do you expect me to do? You call the police and you can send them away. What makes you think I will? If you don't get rid of them, I'll throw this switch. What have I got to lose? Well, there they are. Put them out in big fast. Will you send them away? <laughs> so you think I'm bluffing, eh, Shadow? No. No, you're not bluffing. I have no doubt that it's high explosive in the hold of this ship. But I wonder... I wonder if you have nerve enough to throw that switch. I wonder... Right, Shadow, you had your chance and you wouldn't take it. Now I'll show you. I'll throw the switch. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't explode. No. No, it didn't explode. The switch doesn't work because I've cut the wires. See where they run along the wall. You, you devil. I'll get you. They may get me now, but I'll get you. You'll never take me alive. Get him out of here. Go on, get him out. I guess it's the man we're after, Commissioner. All right, you, come on. Get going. Yes, Commissioner Weston, that is your man. That is the leader of the counterfeit ring you've hunted so long. You win, Shadow. The Shadow. I might have known. I had a hunch it was you again when the mysterious call came through. Commissioner Weston, there's a girl in the next cabin. She says she isn't a member of the gang. She is Mary Sullivan, daughter of Michael Sullivan. Convicted of perjury in the counterfeit trial. Sullivan's daughter? Yes. She risked her life to find these men. Reward her by getting her father out of prison. He'll be freed in the morning. You have my word on that. It looks like you're due a reward for this night's work, Shadow. My reward, like yours, Commissioner, is in protecting the defenseless from those who have not learned that crime does not pay. the many copyrighted stories that appear in the Shadow magazine. The characters in the story are entirely fictitious, and their similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not the shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. As you know, I've been working to lose weight for a while, but I love bread, which is pretty much 100% carbs. One slice of wheat bread is about 12 carbs. That's 24 carbs if you're making a sandwich. And that's just the bread before you put anything into the sandwich. But I saw an ad online for Hero Bread that claimed zero carbs. I was skeptical. I tried other zero-carb breads in the past that were absolutely horrid. But I clicked and ordered a loaf of their seed bread and their white bread. Not only did it feel and taste like actual bread, I've gone back to making sandwiches like I did before my low-carb diet. I can have a grilled cheese without worry. I make many pizzas by toasting the white bread and using it like pizza crust. So I went back and found that Hero Bread also has hot dog buns, so I jumped on that. Again, zero carbs. They have zero-carb hamburger buns, dinner rolls, tortillas, and more, even croissants. 
I asked them if I could please work with them and they said yes, so now you can get Hero Bread by visiting WeirdDarkness.com slash Hero. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash Hero. And if you create a subscription, you can even save 10% on everything you order. If low carb is your life right now, try Hero. WeirdDarkness.com slash Hero. The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today's story, Sabotage. Today's exciting adventure with The Shadow starts in just a moment. But first, I'd like to say a few words about health. Over 50% of all family colds can be traced to uneven heat or overheating in the home. So protect your family's health by burning blue coal, America's finest anthracite then you'll be sure of steady, lasting, healthful heat at less cost. The next time you order fuel, ask for Blue Coal by name. You don't have to get a full supply. Your nearest Blue Coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. Stand by for test number 11. Engine room standing by, Commander. Ship full speed ahead! What the... Engine room! Hello! Hello, engine room! Chief Engineer Swain reporting. Boiler explosion, sir. Three casualties, sir. Lord, what happened, Commander? Boiler explosion, Lieutenant. Hard luck, sir. Luck nothing. You mean another case of sabotage? Yes, sabotage. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine L-21 calling submarine base. Submarine base answering L-21. Go ahead, L-21. Submarine L-21 in distress. Submarine L-21 down off Diamond Head. Cannot rise. Emergency. Emergency. Up, damn it. Looks like sabotage. Looks like sabotage. Cruiser returning to base. Cruiser returning to base. Explosion. Explosion in after gun turret. Three dead. Six wounded. Suspect sabotage. Suspect sabotage. Good Lord. Hello. 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 Sentry post number four reporting. Explosion and fire. Explosion and fire and destroyer dry dock. Flag Island Shipyard! Flag Island Shipyard! Here's Admiral Keeley now. Uh, well, what are uh, the findings of the board, Admiral? Yeah, Admiral, what's the dope on this sabotage ring? Gentlemen, the board has authorized me to make this statement to the press. Let's have it, Admiral. Yeah, let's have the lowdown, Admiral. Our inquiry indicates that all ships affected by recent acts of sabotage have all been built, reconditioned, or repaired in the Sag Island yard. Sag Island, eh? Yes. And every resource at the command of the government is being directed toward the apprehension of those responsible for the systematic blows at the naval defense strength of the United States. <laughs> And would you mind telling me where you've been for the past five days? I was nearly frantic until I got your call asking me to meet you. 
And why those old clothes? And why haven't you shaved? I'm sorry, Margot. I've been at Sag Island. Sag Island? You mean where they're having all the trouble in the shipyard? Yes. It seemed to be a case where the shadow might be of some use to his country. You've uncovered something. Is that why you sent for me, Lamont? I'm not sure, but I stumbled on something last night. It's been a process of elimination. Where are we going? Back to Sag Island? Yes, we're almost there now. Lamont, have you anything definite to work on? It seems so hopeless. You forget, Margot, that I, as the shadow, have a certain gift. You mean what the underworld call the power of invisibility? Yes, and the ability to read other men's minds, particularly the mind of a man who has something to hide. But you've got to find that man first, Lamont. I know. Do you mean that out of the 3,000 men in the Sag Island shipyard, you found the one man who has eluded the Secret Service, the police, and everyone for weeks? I think I have, Margot. I'll know for sure tonight. What do you want me to do, Lamont? We're coming into Sag Island now. I want you to go to the Sag Island Hotel, take a room, and set up the shortwave radio outfit. You brought it, didn't you? Yes, it's in the baggage compartment. Good. Now listen, Margot. Tune in the wave I use as the shadow and wait. Wait all night if necessary. Stop the car here, Margot. Yes. Lamont, I know you don't believe in woman's intuition. At least you pretend not to. On the contrary, I have a healthy respect for intuition. Now be careful. I have a premonition myself. Lamont, can't you tell me anything more? I can only tell you I'm going into that bar down the street. If this man is the one I think he is, we will have a very interesting visit in that bar. Hey, bartender, set him up again. Yeah, one more round. Come on, boys. Closing time. All right. Come on, Jake. Okay. Good night. Come on, Bill. Let's go. Good night, boys. Good night. Holy mackerel. Two o'clock already. An hour passes quickly when a man is talking about himself, Mr. Buckler. What? What have I been talking about? What have I... Say, who the devil are you, anyway? If you're one of them Secret Service guys trying to pump me, you're barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, I'm not a Secret Service man. I... Well, then what's your game? What's yours? You're not looking for a job. You're a phony. I have a good notion to turn you over to the cops. They're rounding up guys like you. Sit down, Buckler. Listen to me or you'll get us both in trouble. Huh? Who sent you here? Who told you to look me up? Would it help if I told you what you're thinking, Buckler? Quit stalling. Who sent you? It's running through your mind over and over again. I see it like a picture on a slate. You're thinking... Did Arnheim send him? Did Arnheim send him? You're a liar. I never mentioned Arnheim's name. Never heard of him. Then why are you thinking of a name you never heard? Don't be a fool, Buckler. I know. What do you know? What did he send you for? What's wrong? Why didn't he... Li- yes. Nothing. Quit staring at me like that or I... You were going to say, why didn't Arnheim tell me himself? Suppose we go ask him. No, no. He don't want anybody to know. If you're in on this, you ought to know that. Listen, you... I don't know how much you know or how much... Hey, you two, it's past closing time. Come on, I'll clear out. Tomorrow's another day. My friend and I were just leaving. Yeah? Well, you have to go out to the alley. I locked up the front door and I ain't unlocking it again. Come along, Buckler. We can finish our talk on the way. On the way to where? Come along, I'll show you. All right. We can cut through the alley. We can talk on the way. Yes, we can talk. After you, Buckler. Okay, come on. Hey, come on. What's the idea? We're going down the dark alley, ain't we? <laughs> hey, you. Cut the comedy and come on. Your companion has left you, Mr. Buckler. He saw your hand slip into that pocket where you carry a blackjack. He saw the picture in your mind. And knowing you meant to crush his skull, he asked me to take his place. What is this, a frame-up? Who was that guy? Who are you? Steve Buckler, you're a traitor. You're selling your birthright, your honor, your country's safety... For money, you'll never live to collect. How do you know all that? Who are you, anyway? This is your first excursion in crime, isn't it, Buckler? What difference does that make? Who are you? What do you want? If you had any contact with the underworld, you wouldn't have to ask who I am. Have you ever heard of the shadow, Steve Buckler? Uh, the shadow. So that's it. That's who you are. The man who can hide anywhere that no one has ever seen. Yes, Buckler. The man no one has ever seen. Don't move. Shall I tell you what you're thinking? I see the picture inside your head. You're thinking you'd kill me if you could only see me. You. You're like that other guy. You can't tell what I'm thinking. All right, you got me dead to rights. What do you want me to do? Stop taking orders from Arnheim. Is, is that all? You mean you're not going to turn me over to the Secret Service? No. 
Now, I'm going to give you one more chance, Steve Buckler. One last chance. <laughs> Shadow's adventure will continue in just a moment. Meanwhile, thousands of homeowners are engaged in another kind of adventure. An adventure in home heating involving the health of your family. I am referring to the purchase of fuel. You know, if you order just any kind of coal, it's a gamble. But it's a gamble you don't have to take. Baltimore families, for example, have found out how to eliminate the risk in fuel buying. They order blue coal by name. That's why the sale of blue coal in Baltimore so far this winter is 40% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. And this is happening in many other cities. Here is real proof that blue coal, the cream of Pennsylvania anthracite, is by actual test the best of all fuel. It is the only solid fuel actually trademarked with a harmless blue color so that you can tell at a glance that it is the fuel that gives low-cost heating. It is the fuel to buy for cleanliness. Baltimore homeowners like the steady, long-burning qualities of blue coal. This is a decided advantage compared to other fuels requiring so much attention. The Glen Alden Coal Company prepared blue coal especially for home use in four home sizes, egg, gold, chestnut, or pea. So I urge all homeowners throughout this area to find out what thousands of Baltimore families have already learned about the greater comfort, convenience, and economy of blue coal. Order your trial ton of blue coal tomorrow. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name of Blue Coal. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Stand by. Stand by. I have found our man. He is meeting someone. The shadow will be with them. Stand by. Who's there? Who's there? It's Regal. Let me in, Butler. Oh, okay. Where? Where's Arnheim? Why didn't he come? What makes you think he'd be fool enough to come here just because you sent word you're in trouble? <sighs> I've got to see him. I've got to talk to him, Regal. What's the matter with you? The Secret Service men been asking you questions again? No, they don't suspect anything. But somebody else is after it. Somebody knows Don. I'm in back of all this sabotage. Well, who is it? <laughs> Come on, Buckler, out with it. Let, <laughs> Let go of me, and I'll tell you. It's, it's the shadow. The shadow. Don't give me that. It's the truth. That's why I phoned Arnheim. I got to have the money you promised me. I got to get away from here. Listen, you fool. How did the shadow get wise to you? How much does he know? I'm not sure, I... How did he find out unless you told him? I didn't tell him. But he can read your mind. Listen, you got to take me to Arnheim. i got to get away. How did you get away from the shadow? He, he let me go. Said he was giving me one last chance. You're lying, Buckler. People don't get away from the shadow. He doesn't let them go unless they're working for him. Listen, if you're trying to pull a double cross on Arnheim, you'll never live to tell it. I'm telling you the truth, Lego. You've got to believe me. All right. Maybe you are. But it just happens we've got another job for you that will prove whether you're on the level with Arnheim or not. I, I can't do anything more. The shadow knows I'm responsible for all those accidents. He'll find me. You can't hide from anybody like that. He'll find you dead if you don't do as you're told. Besides, Buckley, you'd like to get that $50,000 Arnheim promised you, wouldn't you? I've done more than he asked already. I've earned that $50,000 a dozen times over. Uh, maybe you have. But you don't get it unless you carry out Arnheim's orders. Well, this is the last. It'll be easy for you. And it won't take you long. I'll wait for you. Take you to Arnheim's place. He'll pay you off and you can be on your way. Uh, what about it, Buckley? What does he want this time? It's that battle cruiser that's going out on a trial run in the morning. <laughs> it's too late to tamper with anything now, Regal. So what? Your turbine inspector? Your schedule to go along, we know that. Oh, but how? What can I do? It's too late, I tell you. I'll show you what you're going to do. You see this metal tube? Yeah. What do you want me to do with it? You're going aboard the cruiser and plant that inside some piece of machinery. Some place where it'll get smashed when the engines start. What's in that tube? Oh, nothing much. Just enough nitroglycerin to tear the turbines out of that cruiser? No, I won't do it. It'd kill every man in the engine room. It won't be the first time, Buckler. I couldn't carry that thing into the yard. They're searching everybody, Rigo. Quit stalling, will you? We know they don't search inspectors. That's why you've been so useful. All right. Suppose I can get it in the machinery. Get off the ship before she sails. 
Tell him I know Hanheim will keep his word. Pay me off and let me get away. I didn't come here to bargain with you, Buckler. All I know is Arnheim told me to bring you back after you'd carried out his orders. All right. I'll do it. But this is the last time. Give me that tube. Now you're talking. But look out for that stuff. It's touchy. Well, come on. What are you waiting for? You better go first. Nothing doing. I'm making sure you get to the yard. That cruiser sails with the flood tide. And don't try anything because I'll be waiting for you in my car when you come out. Well, come on. Sabotage ring. Morning, Mr. Buckler. Oh, morning, Lieutenant. Giving the turbines a bit of final inspection before we start on the trial run? Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd have a look around. Go right ahead. I have to check the gauges. Let me know if you find anything that needs adjustment. I'll let you know, Lieutenant. I'll show on her. I'll show him I'm not afraid to go through with this. There, now. Just wait till those turbines start spinning. Till they smash that metal tube of nitroglycerin. Just wait. Everything looking all right, Mr. Butler? Yeah. Yeah, everything's fine. Just fine, Lieutenant. Fine. Yes. Everything will be just fine. In just a moment. As soon as I've removed this tube of nitroglycerin that Buckler put in the turbine. <laughs> Margo. Margo, wait a minute. Oh, Lamont, thank heavens you're here. There goes that black sedan. Buckler and a man named Rigo. Follow them and don't get too close. What happened in the shipyard? Well, Buckler tried to carry out another sabotage job for a man named Arnheim. He's the man we want. Did you stop Buckler? Yes, but he doesn't know it. Don't have an accident, Margo. We'll be scattered all over the landscape. Oh. Careful, Margo. What do you mean? Just as this metal tube I'm carrying contains enough nitroglycerin to blow us to Kingdom Come if it's jolted hard enough. Where'd you get it, Lamont? From Buckler? Yes, he left it in a gearbox for the battle cruiser. Oh, so that's why you followed him into the shipyard. Slow down, Margo. You're getting too close to that car. Yes, yes. I, I had to stop that murderous scheme, even if it meant losing track of Buckler and Rigo. But do you think they'll lead us to this man who seems to be behind all this? On high? I'm sure of it. Look, Lamont. They're telling him that big estate. Quick, Margo. Go up the road and stop. Yes. Lamont, look at the sign. Hmm. Redland Sanitarium. This doesn't look like a place where Arnheim would have his headquarters. That's probably why he selected it. Well, Margot, this is it. Lamont, you're not going in there alone. Yes, the shadow is going to return this little metal instrument of death to Dr. Arnheim in person. Doctor? Yes, just look at that sign, Margot. Redland Sanitarium, Dr. Felix Arnheim, resident physician. Oh, please don't go in there alone, Lamont. Let's notify the state police. You can. I have the radio transmitter in the car. Good, and I, I want you to call the state police on the regular wavelength five minutes after I've gone in the house. Well, why not call them now? Margo, we're not dealing with amateurs. They're undoubtedly prepared against police raids. If the police blunder in there, they'll only find an empty house. I've got to go in there alone. Don't take that night for blistering with your Lamont. Well, Margo, I must. This tube of... Concentrated death is an important part of my plan to hold those men in that house until the police break in. Oh, don't, Lamont. You said you had a premonition, remember? Don't, Margo, worry. Call the police, and in five minutes, five minutes, which is in the lap of the gods. And in the hands of the shadows. Mm -hmm. Dr. Arnhem. Sir, so you have to come to tell me you're afraid, Mr. Butler. You wish to go away. Far away. Yes. Yes, I know when I've had enough. And I want that $50,000 and I want it quick. So, have you carried out my last instructions? Yes, I have. And that's the finish. 
Send me off and let me get away from here. Well, I'm afraid we must wait until we are sure of the success of your latest venture in sabotage, Mr. Butler. Listen, on, I'm Finding that night for glittering on the cruiser will be traced to me an hour after the explosion. Every Secret Service agent in this country will be after me. We will see that they do not find you. I'll see to that myself. Listen, you'll give me that $50,000 and let me get out of here now or I'll... So what? Keep him covered, Mr. Regal. Don't make a move, Butler. I hate to shoot men in the bank. <laughs> what are you going to do if we don't pay you, Mr. Butler? Oh, no, I'm, I'm warning you. Tell Regal not to shoot. Do you think I didn't know you'd try something like this? Do you think I'd come here without an ace up my sleeve? Go on, Mr. Butler. Just this. This little bottle filled with some of the nitroglycerin you sent me to plant on the cruiser. You know what'll happen if I throw it. And I'll throw it if Regal shoots. Mr. Butler, you're bluffing. That metal tube was sealed and could not be opened. You're crazy. I opened it. Pulled a little out of it. I... Regal. I think Mr. Butler has served us long enough. He wants to go far away. I think we should help him. No. Don't. I've done everything you wanted. You can't kill me. You'll be caught. Mr. Butler, this is a sanitarium. Many persons have died here. It is quite useful. The police think nothing of one death, more or less. Are you sure there's no nitro in that bottle, Doctor? I'm <laughs> quite sure. I think. Now, Mr. Rigo. No. No, don't. Oh. Shadow. The shadow warned me. I should have listened. Listen, Mrs. Shadow. Very good, Mr. Rigo. Now, uh, this. Uh, this American man of mystery. The shadow. He interests me. You told me something over the telephone. Yes, he got to Butler last night. Makes himself invisible. As I told you over the phone, I think we'd better get out of the country for a while. Because of this, uh, shadow? He's just a man using hypnotic forces that affect men's minds. Well, maybe, but once he gets on your trail, there's no shaking him off. But I know something about such forces. <laughs> he can appear in a room without being seen. How do do it? Some call it the powers of angels or devils. But it's the art of mesmerism. Hypnotic suggestion is very old. And certain men of modern science have developed it amazingly. Well, no matter how he does it, I don't want to meet this shadow. In that case, Mr. Rigo, uh, will you be so kind as to remove that body? I I dislike the presence of the dead. All right, I'll take care. <coughs> I'll be in the cellar if you need me. I shall not need you. Say, what's funny, Doc? What are you grinning about? I am looking forward to a conversation I'm going to have. Somebody coming here? Uh, not exactly. Don't concern yourself, Mr. Rigo. This is something beyond your comprehension. Okay. I'll be on tap if you need me. What are you waiting for, Shadow? Why don't you speak? How long have you known I was in this room, Doctor? For quite some minutes, Shadow. While I'm not a master of your art of invisibility, my mind is sensitive to such a forceful concentration as you exert to cloak your presence. I see. Since you sent Rigo away, it is evident you are not afraid of me. Mm, fear is a luxury I do not allow myself, Shadow. Your career of sabotage is over, Dr. Arnheim. I think not. I have never met a man who did not have a prize, Shadow. I have only one prize for your kind, Doctor. Prison. You could be very valuable to me, Shadow. Don't reach into that drawer, Doctor. A gun is of no use. A gun? <laughs> that is a crude way of setting a difference of opinion. But uh, money, I can pay well. Money won't help you. Then you leave me no alternative. You see that little wheel set into this wall? Yes. I turn it and... Gas. Yes, Shadow. Gas. The room is airtight. It served me well on other occasions, Shadow. You can't get out. The door is locked on the outside. What good will it do you to kill me if you also die? I'm not going to kill you or myself with this gas. What then? Just enough gas will be liber liberated to numb your powers of concentration. Enough to destroy your ability to remain invisible. You can't resist it, Shadow. And just the moment you will weaken, become visible, and the moment I see you, 
The moment I catch the faintest glimpse of a shadowy form, I shoot. The air's becoming quite heavy, Shadow. Yes, but... <laughs> Listen, Dr. Arnheim. The police are closing in, Doctor. So, you don't trust your own powers. You had to have the police to help you. In a few minutes, the place will be surrounded. That is all the time I need. You will become visible. I shall kill you. And then... And then? I'll take the police a little while to break into this room. When they do, they will find a dead shadow. But I shall not be here. This door behind me leads to a passageway which leads to a bay. A speedboat awaits me there. I know about the speedboat, Dr. Arnheim. You see? The gas is doing its work. You're weakening. Your power of invisibility is losing its... What is it, Rigo? Doctor, quick, the police, the passageway. The speedboat is ready. We can make it. Hey, what are you doing with that gas? What's the idea? Wait, Rigo. The shadow. He's here in this room. In just a moment, he will become visible. But you haven't time to wait. The police are already in the house. Don't try to escape in that speedboat. I have turned it into a death trap, Dr. Arnheim. Come, come, quicker. It'll be too late. Wait, Dr. Arnheim. Death is waiting for you in that speedboat. A violent death of your own making. No, you can't love me. Don't listen to him, Doctor. Hurry. All right. But remember, Shadow. We shall meet again. I'm afraid not, my friend. But first, let me turn off this gas. Strike away! Drive everybody to fire! Wilson! Harvey Davidson! You men take me upstairs! Right. Rescue, follow me! Right out the room, Sergeant. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Captain! <coughs> this room's full of gas! Sergeant, an iron door there. Try it. Looks like they skipped. What was that? Sounded like an explosion down near the water. <laughs> yes, it was an explosion, gentlemen. And there will be no more wrecking of warships. It was the tube of nitroglycerin intended for the new battle cruiser by Dr. Arnheim. And placed in the gears of the good doctor's own speedboat with the compliment of the shadow. <laughs> I've just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, to visit sponsors you hear about during the show, sign up for my newsletter, enter contests, connect with me on social media, hear other podcasts that I host, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression, dark thoughts, or addiction. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Sometimes you feel a bit nutty, especially if you're a weirdo. If that feeling transfers to your taste buds as well, I've got some great news for you. Weird Dark Roast Nutty Mummy Coffee. Wrap your taste buds around this medium dark roast blend with shrouds of almond, honey, and chocolate. Each bag of Nutty Mummy is exclusive to Weird Darkness and is roasted to order, then bandaged, I mean bagged, specifically for you to ensure maximum freshness for you, your mummy, and anyone else you share it with. Entomb your old coffee and bring your taste buds back from the dead with Weird Dark Roast Nutty Mummy at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee.
shadow knows. <laughs> Blue Coal presents The Shadow, the mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, the Society of the Living Dead. In just a moment, The Shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have an important message for all you homeowners. We are now in the midst of the most treacherous season of the entire year. But you can protect your family's health during this danger period by burning blue coal. For blue coal gives you clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you order fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. Classic City Desk. Yes, go ahead, Turner. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are being held in Holly Military Prison as spies. The Smiths are believed not to be American citizens. What? Yes. The Prime Minister was handed a note by American Ambassador this morning. Yes, go ahead. American State Department reported investigating circumstances under which the Smith passports were issued. Good work, Turner. Keep feeding it. Yes, sir? Hold the presses for a new front page story. London correspondent is on the wire. This phony passport racket is being uncovered. New York, New York. More news on the Smith case. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are not citizens. A fake passport and identification ring is suspected. The name Schwartz was taken from tombstones to secure passports. More startling disclosures are promised by federal agents and local authorities who suspects widespread Mom, plot. Will you turn that radio All right, Margot. Well, this fake passport and identification record interests me. The Scotland Yard in England, the State Department in Washington, and a whole New York police force working on that fake passport racket. Do you have to get mixed up in it? You see, Margot, it, it, it ties up with a case that interests me. You mean the suicide of your broker, Henry Adams? Yes. But Lamont, what possible connection could there be? I, I don't see it. Well, I didn't see any connection either, and... Today, although Adams never struck me as being the type of man who would commit suicide. His body was found two weeks ago, and they buried him right afterwards in the family vault in Kingman Cemetery. Seems to me that's what you might call a closed case. Well, I don't agree, Margot. I noticed in one of the gossip columns the other day a remark that interested me very much. What is that? An item that said that Irene Adams, the orphan daughter of Henry Adams, was being courted by Ray Kelvin. Oh, Ray Kelvin was Henry Adams' partner, wasn't he? Yes, he was. But what interested me even more was another item which said that Ray Kelvin was very friendly with a man named Berger, who, according to all reports, is a very questionable character. I don't see the connection, Lamont. Mm, But much of the evidence points to Berger being mixed up in his business. Oh! That fake passport and identification ring that we just heard about on the radio. Yes. Margot, I want you to call on Adams' orphan daughter. Her name is Irene. Pose as a reporter. Mm-hmm. Ask her about the rumors of her coming marriage with Kelvin and find out if she actually saw the face of her father at any time after his death. All right, Lamont. Where will you be when I get back? I'll phone you at my office. Are you going to visit Berger as Lamont Cranston? No, Margot, I... I rather think Berger will be more impressed if I visit him as a shadow. I'm so sorry, Miss Adams. I I know it's hard to talk to a stranger about such personal things so soon after your father's tragic death. Yes. Yes. True that my father didn't want me to marry Mr. Kelvin. It seems so unfair. Ray Kelvin was his own partner in business. But you are going to marry Mr. Kelvin. Yes. I wanted to wait. It's just soon after Father's death. But Ray has to go away. To Europe. He may be gone for years. It'll be a quiet place. Oh, I see. Mr. Kelvin's leaving the country. But isn't he indicted on a stock swindling charge? Yes. Oh, but he says we'll soon have proof that he didn't have anything to do with it. Miss Adams, don't you realize that Mr. Kelvin can only clear himself by proving that your own father was a swindler? 
No, no. Ray wouldn't do that. Did you ever see your father after they found his body in the river? No. No. Mr. Kelvin said I shouldn't. He said it would only upset me. Do you believe your father committed suicide, Miss Adams? No. I can't bring myself to believe that of that. What does Ray Kelvin think about your father's death? Ray said it was suicide. The dad was worried over what would happen when they tried him on that stock swindle charge. But don't you see, Miss Adams, Kelvin, your fiancé, has been implying all along that your father is a swindler. That he's going to clear himself by pinning the guilt on your father. No, no, I can't believe that. That's why your father opposed your marriage to Kelvin. No. Why are you saying these things? You have no right. Please go. Yes, I, I am going, Miss Adams. I'm so sorry if I've hurt you, but I... I believe you're going to thank me for keeping you from marrying a treacherous thief. Perhaps even a murderer. What do you mean? Who are you talking about? Your dead father's partner. Your fiancé, Ray Kelvin. All right, Kelvin. What's on your mind? Now, listen, Berger, I want action. I won't be safe till I get Adams to sign a confession taking full blame for that stock swindle. Yeah. I see you got the confession all ready for Adams to sign. Yes. Stated the day he was supposed to have jumped in the river. Hmm. How are you going to account for not having produced the confession until now? That's easy. I'll just tell the authorities that in going over his papers, I've just found it. Mm. <laughs> the government will have to dismiss the charges against me when I produce this confession signed by Adams. What are you going to do with Adams after he signed? That's where you and your man in the morgue come in. Hmm? You've got the papers that were on the man who was buried in Adams' place. All you have to do is put those papers on Adams when we dump him in the river. What? That's murder. I've never gone that far before. And you've never been paid $10,000 before either. Now, come on, quit stalling. Get your hat and coat. We're going to finish this job now. Now, wait a minute, Calvin, wait a minute. I'll give you back that money. Every cent of it. No, no, I'm afraid of this. <laughs> Burger. What was that? Somebody laughed here in this office. Yes, Kelvin. It is the laughter that has echoed through the mind of many a killer. During his last hours in the death house. Who is that, Berger? Calvin. There's nobody here. Yes, Mr. Berger. The shadow is here. The shadow? Calvin, did you hear that? The shadow. He knows. He's not everything. You can't go through with it now. Yes, Kelvin. I know everything. Yes? Well, I've heard about you, Shadow. The man who has the power to make himself invisible. <laughs> I know how you do it. Hypnotic suggestion. Hindu mesmerism. Oriental trickery. Well, you don't scare me. Your murderous scheme is doomed to failure, Kelvin. Give it up before it is too late. Yeah, listen to him, Kelvin. Adams is still alive. We haven't murdered him yet. No, but we've kidnapped him and we'll burn for that if we're caught. Only we're not going to be caught, shadow or no shadow. Come on, Berger. You're coming with me. No, no, don't make me go through with it, Kelvin. Come on. Don't. I'll show you what I think of the shadow. Come on, or I'll drill you where you stand. And the shadow if he tries to stop me. You've had your warning, Kelvin. Remember. Come on, Berger, get going. And as for you, shadow, here's a warning from me. If you follow us, I'll find a way to kill you. Remember that. Hello, Margot Lane. Lamont, I talked to Irene Adams. She never saw her father after he died. Henry Adams isn't dead, Margot. Oh, Lamont, are you sure? Where is he? I don't know, but Berger and Kelvin are on their way to the place where they're holding him, and I'm following them. Lamont, Kelvin is planning to marry Irene Adams and leave the country in a few days. Much can happen in a few days, Margot, even in a few hours. Lamont, let me meet you. Go with you. Maybe I can help. You can help me most by standing by with a shortwave radio. Keep it tuned in on the band the shadow always uses. All right, Lamont. But now you've discovered that Mr. Adams is alive, why don't you let the police handle it? As far as the police are concerned, Henry Adams is dead. Buried, a closed case. I guess you're right, but what about Berger and Calvin? 
Do they know the shadow is on their trail? Yes. And Kelvin has dared the shadow to follow him. Lamont, it may be a trap, a trick to get you someplace where all your powers won't save you, where you'll be helpless. Lamont, please don't go. Please. Margot, I must follow Berger and Kelvin. If they lead me to Adams, I may need help. Stand by, Margot. Stand by until you hear from the shadow. Shadow will return in just a moment. But first, I have a word of warning for you homeowners. Throughout this dangerous winter season, don't subject your family to needless colds and illness, resulting from uneven, on and off type heating. Thousands of careful homeowners are taking steps to avoid this risk. They're playing safe by ordering blue coal. For instance, blue coal sales in the city of Rochester for the current winter season are 20% ahead of last year's figure, and numerous other cities show similar increases. Here's why blue coal is preferred by so many people. Blue coal is a selected Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that gives off cleaner, more uniform, more dependable heat than any other coal. What's more, furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn anthracite. And the cream of all American anthracite is blue coal. The harmless blue coloring with which blue coal is tinted is your all-time guarantee of better heat at less cost. Blue coal is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, and every carload is tested and retested for purity and uniform sizing before shipment. What's more, blue coal is especially prepared for home use. You can get it in the four popular domestic sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. So be guided in your fuel selection by Rochester families. For health and economy, too, insist on blue coal. Ask for it by name. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Let's get this over with. What's the matter with you, Berger? You're jumpy as a cat. I know. It's the shadow. I'm scared. If you had any sense, you'd be scared, too. Oh, forget the shadow. Yeah? Well, suppose he's trailed us here, to Kingland Cemetery. Now, listen to me, Berger. Your job is to make Adam sign that confession. The shadow has developed superstitious fear in the underworld by means of his magician's tricks. He's dealing now with intelligent people who don't believe in hocus-pocus. Why, there isn't one chance in a thousand the shadow's been able to follow us here. Uh, what'll you do if he has? Huh? What can you do? You leave the shadow to me. I'll deal with him if he comes. Uh, it's the Adam's grave vault just ahead, isn't it? Yeah. It's that underground vault on the left. You got the keys to the vault? Yeah, right here. I'll get the vault door open. Yeah. Give me, give me a hand with this door. Ouch. Wait a ton. Uh, I'll be careful Adams doesn't get out. Where's your flashlight? Right here. <laughs> There's Adams on the floor in the corner. what I tell you? <laughs> I bet he's so weak he can't crawl, much less run. Burger, he looks like he's dead. If he is, the whole scheme's ruined. I warned you to be careful. He ain't dead. <laughs> I know I'm dead when I see one. He's just sleeping, that's all. Wake him up and we'll see if he's ready to listen to reason. He'll listen. Come on, Adams. Come on. Wake up. Hey, snap out of it. What? What? Who are you? Never mind who I am. Come on. Sit up. Are you going to take me out of this tomb? Are you? Yeah, you're going to get out. All you have to do is sign your name to a piece of paper. Water. Give me a drink. All I've had for days is the moisture on the stones. And nothing to eat. Nothing. Here. I got something better than water. A slug of this brandy will set you up. Oh, thanks. Thank you. 
how did you find out they'd locked me up in this grave vault? I thought they were going to leave me here till I died. And then put me in that coffin there in place of that corpse that's supposed to be me. Never mind about that now. You're going to have a chance to get out of this grave alive. If you do as you're told. Listen, Berger, quit wasting time. Here's the confession on the pen. Make him sign it. Kelvin, you... I couldn't see you with a flashlight in my eyes. You, my own trusted partner. You're behind this. You've done this to me. You stole those securities. Framed me. Sure, sure I did. You're innocent. But if you want to get out of this family vault of yours, you'll take the blame. Sign this confession. I won't. I'll never sign it. Oh, yes, you will. Oh, cut it out. Cut it out, Kelvin. You can't stand much of that in the shape he's in. Do you want to kill him? I won't sign it. I won't. A confession for me would clear you, Kelvin. Put the blame on me. Leave you free to marry my daughter, Irene. You made her think I'd drown myself. I'm innocent of the swindling charge. You're the guilty one. You sign that confession or I'll break every bone in your body. Oh. I told you to go easy. Yeah. Adams is out cold. Shut up and help me bring him around. With the shadow on our trail, there's no time to lose. Yeah, I know. And I give plenty to know where the shadow is right now. <laughs> what would you give? Burger. Come. He's here. The shadow's here in the mold. Burger, turn off that flashlight. <laughs> now you think we're on even terms. Don't you, Kelvin? You can't see me in the dark of the tomb. And you think I cannot see you. Yes. Yes, that's right, Shadow. Kelvin, where are you going? Stay with me, Burger. And you too, Shadow. I may not be able to see you, but if you come close enough to try to stop me closing the door of this vault, I'll fill you full of lead. Kill him! Kill him! Don't leave me You're here! You're no use to me anymore, Burger. You can thank the Shadow for that. You ain't gonna leave me in here to die! You dirty double cutting rat! All right, Burger. I'll do you one last favor. I won't leave you to die from thirst and hunger. You'll be luckier than Adams and the Shadow. Come on, Burger. Try to get out before I close this steel door. No, oh, give me a break, Tommy. I'll let go. Give me a chance. I have a gun on me, you know that. Yes, Burger, I know that. Come on, I was just fooling. Oh, you mean I killed him? You mean you <laughs> So, Kelvin, you shot Burger and added murder to your other crime. You'll never get out of this vault to tell about it, Shadow. You've cheated me out of a chance to beat that swindle indictment. You've ruined my chance of getting Irene with her Adam's money. Well, now you're going to have plenty of time to wish you'd never meddled in this. You'll have the pleasure of watching Adams die. He's almost dead now. And when he's gone, you'll have the company of three dead men. Three dead men waiting for you to join them. Goodbye, Shadow. You can lock that steel door, Kelvin. But somehow the Shadow will still get out. All right, Shadow. Let's see you try it. <laughs> Shadow. <coughs> Shadow. <coughs> Kelvin double-crossed me. <sighs> I'm done for all right. <coughs> what about you? Can you get out of this place like you said? The police will be here in a few minutes. You, you told them to come here, you mean? No, but I'm going to. Right now. Margot Lane. Margot Lane. Notify Commissioner Weston to pick up Ray Kelvin. Have him send a squad of men to Kingman Cemetery. Have them open the grave vault of Henry Adams. Adams is alive, but in the critical condition. Margot, don't come into the cemetery yourself. Kelvin is at large. Notify Police Commissioner Weston at once. So, Shadow, you're calling the cops. Shadow, it's Kelvin. He's in that air vent at the top of the vault. <laughs> He heard you calling the cops. Yes, I heard you, Shadow. And if you think the police are going to get here in time to save you, you're mistaken. Every minute you wait in gloating brings you nearer the electric chair, Kelvin. Don't waste your sympathy on me, Shadow. 
I wonder what you look like when the cops find you with Berger and Adams. All of you drowned like rats in a trap. Because that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to drown like rats in a trap. Listen. Lola! He's going to fill the boat full of water, Shadow! Yes, right up to the top. And it won't take long. Too bad for you I found a fire hose in the groundkeeper's shed. Now let the police come. They're welcome to anything they can get out of any of you when they get here. So long, Shadow. Let's see you get out of that spot. Shadow. He's gone. Water. Water. Here's water. Water. Shadow. The water's in these steep on the floor already. Yes, and it's rising every minute. Our only hope is that the police will get here in time. Here's that radio of yours. Tell them what's happened. Tell them to hurry. The radio transmitter is wet. Useless. Except the last appeal for help. Help me, Shadow. Help me. You deserve no help, Berger. You left Adams here to die. Oh, Calvin made me do it. I never did anything like this before. I ran a fake passport and identification racket, that's all. I never killed anybody. I swear to Shadow. The water is getting deeper. Deeper. Water. Water. There's only one high place water. in this tomb. One high place. On top of the casket. The casket of the man you buried and made the world believe was Henry Adams. Who oh, lift me up there? I was drowned here on the floor. I read. I no, read. No. Help me. I won't lift you up. Adams is too weak to stand. There's only room for one on top of that coffin. And if anyone is to have a few extra minutes of life, Adams will get it. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? Put Adams on top of the coffin. His life is worth a dozen like yours. Irene. Irene. Forgive me. I was afraid you were going to marry Kelvin. I knew he was treacherous. A thief. Coward. Shadow. In God's name, help me up. Help me on my feet. Leave me against the wall. I'll do that much for me. Yes, Berger. I'll do that much for you. It's all I can do. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Shadow. <laughs> Here I am, trying to save himself from drowning. So that I can die of bullet wounds. Here I am, being lifted by a man whose hands I can feel on my arms, but I can't see. <laughs> maybe, maybe it isn't happening. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe this is death. No, Berger, this is not death. This is real. You're still alive, and I am here, and Adams is here. The water is rising all around us. It's up to our waist now. What about you, Shadow? I've heard queer things about you that you couldn't be killed. Can't you get out of here, huh? Even though I have the power of invisibility, I cannot walk through solid stone walls. No windows, no other opening but that door. Try it. Try it just home. Maybe you didn't lock when Kelvin closed it, huh? Maybe. Oh, try something, Shadow. Try anything. Yes, yes, Berger. There might be a chance. A big chance. I'm going to try to break down the door. <coughs> ah, useless, Berger. You mean you can't even save yourself? No, I can't even save myself. Help doesn't come soon as this vault fills to the roof. The shadow will die as quickly as you, Berger. No, no. <coughs> Not at... Quite as quick. I'm finished, Shadow. <coughs> Thanks to Kelvin's bullets. <coughs> I won't drown. No. And perhaps you were lucky after all, Berger. Irene. Irene, help me. Help me. Listen to me. Listen to me, Henry Adams. Listen. Help is coming. 
But it will be too late unless you help yourself. Kelvin. Kelvin is filling this tomb with water. It's up to the top of the coffin you're lying on. Listen to me, Henry Adams. You must get up. Hold on to me or you will drown. I, I can't. My strength is gone. You must. You must, for Irene's sake. Who are you? What are you doing here? I am the shadow. I came here to save you, but I'm afraid I failed. Shadow? A shadow? It doesn't matter who or what I am. Shadow! Shadow, are you still there? Still alive? So, Kelvin, the fascination of murder has drawn you back to the scene of your crime. I just wanted to make sure of you, Shadow. In that case, you'd better wait a few minutes longer, Kelvin. Who is that? Who is that talking? It sounds like Kelvin. Irene! Irene, don't do it! Don't marry Kelvin! He'll marry me. With you and Berger and the shadow out of the way, she'll never know, Adams. She'll never know. Kelvin! Kelvin, do you hear that? Do you hear that, Kelvin? It's the police! Run for your life, Kelvin, or better still! Fight them off! They're cheating you out of your triumph of death! They're going to drown like rats. The police won't get me. They won't get you out of there in time. You'll drown! Drown like rats! You will! Get that man! Stop him! Stop! You are a troop! Let him have it! You win, Shadow. I got him! Okay, come on! Come on, men! Get the door of that vault open and see what's going on here. Uh, Here's the keys I got from the watchman at the cemetery gate, Commissioner. All right. Get that door open. All right. Commissioner! There's water spurting out around the sides and bottom of the door. Good heavens. The hole's been flooded. Commissioner, there's a street flushing hose attached to the hydrant. It's pouring water into that vault. Shut it off. Okay. okay. Sergeant, open that door. Yes, sir. Look out, Sergeant. Good heavens. The vault must have been filled with a roof. Quick. Throw your flashlight on the vault. Yes, sir. Commissioner, there's a man lying on top of that pack. Come on, that man isn't dead. He's trying to get up. Yes, Come on, here. Give me a hand with it. Right. Come on. This... This must be Adam. It is. Adam. Henry Adam. Commissioner Weston. Shadow. It's... The shadow again. Yes, Commissioner. It's the shadow. You were just in time. So I see. What's back of all this? Henry Adams committed suicide two weeks ago. He was buried in this vault. If this man is Adams, who's in that sealed casket? Just one of the many unidentified men and women who find their way into the morgue, Commissioner. Foreign spies and secret agents pay big prices for passports issued in the names of those unidentified men and women. Good heaven, Shadow. But, Commissioner, the fake identification ring is smashed. And Berger, the leader, was killed. Commissioner, this is the end of the society of the living dead. Ladies and gentlemen, before the shadow leaves you, here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. Tonight I have some news for all you homeowners. When you buy blue coal, you're entitled to the free John Barclay service. At your request, a John Barclay serviceman will be sent to inspect your heating plant. No matter what your problem may be, he can solve it for you. And his valuable advice is yours, free of charge. Thousands of families are profiting by the John Barclay heating service. For instance, a woman in Roxbury, Massachusetts writes, I'm truly grateful for the valuable information given me by your John Barclay serviceman. I've learned more about saving coal and looking after my furnace this year than ever before. And friends, that's only one of the many expressions of satisfaction I receive every day. 
So for the very best results, I earnestly recommend that you burn blue coal in your heating plant and take advantage of the free John Barclay heating service. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. And here's another suggestion for you homeowners. Either write me in care of this station or send to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, for my valuable free booklet, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, write to John Barclay or Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, and get your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn Blue Coal. It is the dark and lonely road. You drive, you're tired, and falling asleep behind the wheel. The windows are down, the cool air blowing through your hair as you crank up the stereo. ACDC blares on the radio and you're screaming out the chorus. Then a set of headlights emerges from the darkness and your night has become a nightmare. Welcome to Last Exit, an anthology of 17 horrific tales where life on the road can sometimes take a dark and unexpected turn. Last Exit by Jason R. Davis, narrated by Weird Darkness host Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Bill Cole presents one of radio's most famous features, The Shadow. The story of the mystery man who strikes terror into the very heart of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today we present The Shadow in one of his most remarkable adventures. A modern mystery of science and crime, The Phantom Voice. In just a moment, the shadow begins his exciting adventure. Meanwhile, I'd like to tell you how you can safeguard the health and comfort of your family during these dangerous winter months. Burn Blue Coal. It gives you safe, uniform, helpful heat all winter long. And for valuable heating information that will save you real money regardless of the fuel you're using, send tonight for John Barclay's free 24-page book, how to reduce the cost of heating your home. Address a postcard to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Don't miss out by delaying. Send for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home right at the close of this program. This way, Margot. Lamont Cranston, where on earth are you taking me? We're on our way to the criminal court, Margot. The criminal court? 
Oh, a murder trial. Mm, this isn't a murder trial. Unless I'm badly mistaken, we're going to witness an assassination. What? An assassination. The assassination of the character and reputation of one of the most outstanding public men in America today. Oh, you mean Senator Durham? Yes. They have been reading about his trial in the papers. They've certainly unearthed plenty of evidence that he accepted that bribe. Unless I've made a mistake in character analysis, that evidence is forged. Durham is more than a political figure, Margot. He's a statesman. He has an independent income. He's devoted his life to unselfish public service. Oh, he's a very wealthy man. Yes, Margot. Senator Durham has given away ten times the amount of money he's accused of taking as a bribe. Well, if that's true, Lamont, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should a man like that take a 15-year prison term for taking a bribe he didn't need? That's the point that worries me. Incidentally, didn't I see that the prosecution expect to spring a surprise bit of evidence today? Exactly. That's why we're here. Come along, Margot. Court's already in session. such outburst <laughs> on the part of the spectators at this trial, and I shall order the courtroom cleared. Proceed, Mr. Defense Attorney. Your Honor, I have stated the case for my client. <laughs> I have shown that by his record, it would have been impossible for him to act as the prosecution claims he has acted. And I have yet to see any proof that Senator Durham has committed any crime. <laughs> I will now call Senator Durham himself to the stand to deny these lies in person. Senator Durham to the stand. Here I am. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Proceed with the examination. Senator, you have heard the prosecution's accusations that you did at some time during last December accept a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi. Yes. What is your answer? I never accepted a bribe from anyone. My answer is, the whole thing is a pack of lies. Order! Order in the court. Your witness, Senator Durham. Do you deny that on the 16th of December last, you received a visit from the late Mario Rinaldi in your room at the Maximilian Hotel? Why, no. He came to see me and I... Confine yourself to specific answers. Gentlemen of the jury, the defense has made much of the senator's long and seemingly illustrious career of public service. They would have you believe that, like Caesar's wife, the defendant, Senator Durham, is above suspicion. They've paraded witnesses to the stand who've told you of his philanthropies, of his unselfish devotion to public service, <coughs> of his blameless personal life in the past. That we do not contest, refute, nor deny. But unfortunately for Senator Durham, he is not being tried for his past. We, the prosecution, need but one more bit of evidence to complete our case. We have that evidence. Order. Order in the court. I beg leave to show the jury a soundtrack motion picture of a meeting between the defendant of the late Mario Rinaldi, whose bribe of $50,000 paid to the defendant is the basis upon which this case was brought to trial. Order. Order in the court. Has this motion picture a direct bearing on this case, Mr. Prosecutor? It has, Your Honor. Has the counsel for the defense any objection to the introduction of this type of evidence without due notice? Senator Durham has nothing whatever to fear from the introduction of any authentic motion picture record of any meeting of Mario Rinaldi and himself, even though the picture was made without the senator's knowledge. Very well. The projection equipment is in the courtroom. Will you order the shades drawn and the lights extinguished? Court attendants will please draw the shades. Again, I caution the spectators against any outbursts of any kind. Furthermore, no one will be allowed to leave the court until the introduction of this evidence is complete. You may proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. With the court's permission, we will place the screen in full view of the jury. Your Honor. Counsel for the defense has a question. For the sake of the record... Will the prosecution state at whose request this motion picture was made? It was made at the request of Anthony Vogel, an attorney of this city. For what reason? As a citizen interested in public welfare. Very well. Now, if the attendant will turn out the lights, 
The prosecution will submit affidavits to prove that this is an authentic film record of a meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi on the evening of December 16th. You may turn on the machine. Yes, sir. Yes? Come in. Oh, hello, Rinaldi. I've been expecting you. Look here, Senator Durham. Why haven't I got the contract award on that Master Street building? The money's been appropriated. You said you'd use your influence if we fixed you up. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi. I told you you'd get that contract. For a consideration. If you didn't send me my present of 50000 for swinging it your way, so naturally I... Oh, so that's it. Do you want to be paid off first, huh? Yes. And in cash. No checks. Okay. You'll get your 50 grand. Get me that contract. I'll be in an hour with your money. Order! Order! Order in the court! Order! Order in the court! That's the end of the film, gentlemen. It's a lie! A lie, I tell you, I never said that! Order! Order in the court! Your Honor! I object! My client never had such a conversation with Mario Rinaldi! That picture is a fake! One moment. Attendants will please turn on the light. Your Honor, allow me to remind the counsel for the defense... The pictures do not lie. Your Honor, we do not deny that the meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi did take place in the manner shown in this film, but we deny that any such conversation took place. Have you any proof of that? There are only two people who could know what went on in that room. Senator Durham and Rinaldi. And Rinaldi is dead. Do you deny the voice was the voice of the defendant? My client admits that it sounds like his voice, but it cannot be, since he never asked or received a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi for any reason or purpose whatever. Your Honor, I ask a recess of this trial in order that the defense may have an opportunity to study this film and soundtrack. I object! I do not see how the due process of law will be impaired by a 24-hour delay. Objection overruled. Courts adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Lamont, after seeing that talking picture of Senator Durham meeting Rinaldi and practically demanding a bribe, how can you, how can anyone doubt his... Margot, the Greeks had a philosophy that ran something like this. Only believe half that which you see and nothing you hear. Oh, but Lamont, that wasn't hearsay evidence. That was the senator speaking. That was his voice. Even he couldn't deny. No man knows the sound of his own voice, Margot. Besides... Durham never spoke those words to Rinaldi. But you saw him. You saw the motion picture. Exactly. Because I did see him speak, I know he didn't say the things that were on the soundtrack of that film. What do you mean, Lamont? Have you ever watched the movement of a man's jaw muscles when he speaks certain words? You mean you know what he really said? No. No, his face was half averted from the camera. I couldn't see his lips. I don't know just what he did say, but I know he didn't utter the words we just heard. Oh, but Lamont, it was still the senator's voice saying those other things, demanding that bribe. I, I'd swear to Yes, you. and so will the jury, Margo. Unless something is done within the next 24 hours, one of the finest men in this country, an innocent man, Senator Durham, is going to be railroaded into prison for 15 years by his political enemies. I'm stopping here, Margo. I uh, want you to wait in the car, please. All right. The lawyer's building. What are you going to do here, Lamont? I'm going up to the 25th floor, Margot. The shadow has an appointment with one of the most crooked lawyers in this city. Anthony Vogel was so interested in the public welfare that he went to the trouble of having a sound camera planted in Senator Durham's hotel suite the night of December 16th. Mm -hmm. waiting for the shadow to return, I would like to ask all homeowners a question. Do you want to save money? Of course you do. 
and you begin real saving when you cut down on the cost of heating your home. Here's the easiest and surest way to do this. Decide now to cook and heat with blue coal. Here's why blue coal is more economical. It is prepared especially for use in the home. And blue coal is Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that furnaces, cooking ranges, and parlor stoves in this section of the country were especially designed to burn. It is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest producer of specially prepared home fuel. And every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and size before shipment. And you can always be sure of getting this superior home fuel because it is tinted with an unmistakable blue color so that you can easily identify it at a glance. In Waverly, New York and vicinity, blue coal sales so far this winter are 27% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. This increase in sales is because Waverly families have found out that blue coal does all I say it will do. So I urge all families throughout this region to try blue coal. Order a trial ton tomorrow. Ask for blue coal by name in any one of four sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. See that swell, Mr. Vogel? You certainly put it over. That sound picture sure turned the trick. Yes, but I'm still worried, Travers. Ah, uh, there ain't nothing to be worried about. Senator Durham's as good as on his way to the pen right now. Well, I won't feel happy until he is. When are you going to get me a wrestling bout, boss? A wrestling bout? Yeah, it's about time I was getting in the ring again. And, well, I could stand the extra dough. Forget you're a wrestler, Travers. You'll make more money in this racket as my bodyguard. Any calls while I was down at court? Yeah, Wilson phoned a couple minutes ago. Why didn't you say so? Well, you didn't ask me. What did he want? I wanted to talk to you. Hey, what do you suppose he wants? Dough? I've paid him all he's going to get. Say, maybe he's read in the afternoon papers what we're really using that soundtrack for. If he gets white-livered and talks... Well, maybe we should fix him so he can't talk, huh, boss? What do you mean? Well, he could fall out of that 15-story apartment of his, accidental-like. He'd only have to fall once. It might be a good plan. Okay, you want me to go over there now and take care of it, boss? No. No, there's no sense doing anything about him until we have to. But the first sign of anybody getting wise to what we're doing, then we'll arrange a neat little accident for friend Wilson. Well, now, Doug, now let's take a look at that Wesley murder case. <laughs> One case at a time, Mr. Vogel. What, what was that? Suppose we review the evidence of the case against Senator Durham. What, what sort of devil's trick is this? Who are you? I am the shadow, Vogel. But I, I can't see you. Nevertheless, Vogel, I am here in the shadows. Gee, what? Somebody's talking and nobody's here. Get up, Travers. I'll handle this. Oh. So you're the shadow, eh? You come here to play your hypnotic tricks on me. What do you know about Senator Durham's business? I know everything about it. I've been listening to your interesting conversation about this Mr. Wilson. He seems to play an important part in your case against Senator Durham. Listen, Shadow. I've heard plenty about you. I don't want to fight you. How much do you want to keep out of this? Always the fixer. How much, Shadow? There isn't enough money in the world to cover up what you're trying to do, Vogel. Who is this man? Wilson. What part did he play in this scheme of yours? Oh, so you don't know. You're just trying to find out, are you, Shadow? Travis, lock the door. Okay, boss. That's locked. Melodrama won't help you, Vogel. Boss, if I could only see this guy, I could... Come on, Travis. We don't need to see him. What do you mean, Come over here. Give me your hand. Well, okay, but it don't make much sense. You'll see. All right. Stand up with me against this wall. Now, stretch out your arms. Can you touch the side wall on that side? Yeah, I can touch it. Good. I can touch it on my side. Now, 
Walk slowly to the other end of the room and don't let your fingers leave the wall. Oh, I get it. Then the shadow can't get past us. Huh? You're quick. Now, walk forward slowly. Slow, you fool. Okay. Well, I... I don't feel nothing. We're almost to the end of the room, boss. Maybe he got away. No, no, he, he couldn't go through the door. It's locked. The window is locked, too. Hey, boss, I felt something. Huh? I got him. I got hold of him, boss. Uh, I can't see him, but I got him. I got the shadow around the throat. He's a man after all. Gee, Strong. Would kill him, Travers. Maybe. Maybe he can. He's choking me. Give, give me a gat, boss. I'll shoot him. You don't need a gun. It'll make too much noise. He's waiting, boss. Kill him, Travers. Give him your famous stranglehold. If he doesn't let go, he'll kill me. Yes, yes, Shadow. This is where you die. Finish him off, Travers. I've got to hurry and take care of Wilson before he gets a chance to talk. trying to get hold of me earlier this evening. Yes, that, that's right. I uh, want to talk to you. Won't you come in? Are you alone? Oh, yes. Good. Uh, Mr. Vogel, when you asked me to do some work for you, I I didn't ask to know what you were going to do with it. I needed the money for my wife, Alice, and kids, and I... You got paid, didn't you? Yes, but... I mean... Well, all this stuff in the papers, Mr. Vogel, about the... Frankly, I, I don't like it. Oh, you don't. Having a little attack of conscience, Wilson? Well, doing a job is one thing, but sending a man away to prison on a false charge is, is something else. So I, I intended to tell you... That... Tell me what? Well, the tell you that I refuse to let it go on any further. Oh, you refuse? Yes. After all, Mr. Vogel, if I tell what I know of, about... Well, what are you going to do about it? Just this. Don't move, Wilson. Put that gun down. Don't be a fool, Bogle. I'm not the fool, Wilson. No. Turn your back to me. That's right. What are you going to do? I'm going to assist at a little accident. No. Walk to that window. Wait. You can't do this to me. You can't. Walk. Okay. Now, open the window. All right, Wilson. Climb up on the windowsill. Just a moment, Mr. Vogel. The shadow. I... I thought Travis took care of you. You thought Travis took care of me, did you? Well, I admit he's a good wrestler. But there was one little hole, Vogel, I learned in the Orient. But he didn't know. He had me beaten for a moment. It was my one chance to get you to lead me to Wilson. You mean you followed me here? Yes. Yes, I followed you here. It wasn't very difficult to get away from Mr. Travers. Seems I arrived just in time for my proof. In time? No. Oh. There, Shadow, there's your proof lying dead on the floor. <laughs> You're crazy, Vogel. You're a fool. You'll get the chair for this. I'm not as crazy as you think. <laughs> so I'm a fool, am I, Shadow? Now, you're the fool for coming here. You're the fool the police will find locked in this room with Wilson's dead body. They'll find you. I'll see that they do. And here's the gun you killed him with. <laughs> Why don't you try the window, Shadow? It's only 15 stones for the floor. <laughs> Shadow. Shadow. Wilson. Wilson. Tell me. Quick. I am, I'm done for. Quick. Oh. Quick, Wilson. Give me the proof. The proof, Wilson. Mm. The proof that you framed Senator Durham. Senator Durham. Come on, Wilson, come on. Tell me, how did you frame Senator Durham? Sure. Alice, darling. My baby. Wilson. <coughs> Wilson! The are you all right? Unlock the door, Margot. Unlock the door. The key's on the outside. Oh, Lamar, I, I heard a shot. I saw Rosa running out, so I couldn't wait. What happened? I hadn't been so 
stupid. Waited so long, but I... I wanted to find out their secret before I spoke. Now... Now it's too late. Wilson is unconscious, I'm afraid. Dying. Vogel has outwitted me. After all... That's it, Vogel. Shot me. You called Bradley. Shot me. You burned for it. Wilson. Wilson. Wilson, listen to me. Listen and think. Think. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Tell me that, Wilson. Tell me that, and I'll see that Vogel pays for doing this to you. Senator Durham, now I remember. I'll show you. Help me into the next room. I'll show you. I will help you. Easy now. Easy. I'll get on the other side. Now, look. It's a recording studio. Yeah, that's right. It's my hobby. I'm an actor. Impersonated by profession. An, an impersonator? Yes. Yeah. Help me in that chair by the turntable. I impersonate people. I've imitated Senator Durham's voice dozens of times. I... <coughs> Quick. Hand me the microphone. Turn on the switch. There. I can't hold out much longer. Here's the microphone. Just drop that needle on the wax record. Turn the switch. This is you, Wilson, speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to... My client, Senator Durham, be dismissed. On what grounds? On the evidence contained on this record, found in the apartment of the late Hugh Wilson, the radio and stage impersonator who was found shot in his apartment last night. I ask the court's permission to play it at this time. Permission granted. You may start the record now. Yes, sir. This is Hugh Wilson speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to impersonate the voice of Senator Durham. It's my voice on the soundtrack of the picture shown at Senator Durham's trial. I'll show sure how I did it. Listen. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get the contact. For the consideration. But you didn't send me my present of $50,000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, that, that's how it was done. That's how I did it. Durham's innocent. You never heard those words. After that. Order. Order in the car. What? It's amazing. Incredible. Your Honor, there is one more voice on the record. At the end. Listen. The voice you have heard is that of Hugh Wilson, murdered by Anthony Vogel. He is the man who sought to frame Senator Durham. But Vogel failed. Just as in the end, all crime must fail. And all criminals pay the penalty of death. Order, order in the court. Whose voice was that? That, Your Honor, is the voice of the man to whom Senator Durham owes his vindication. The voice of the shadow. I've just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental.
So far on my low-carb journey, I've lost over 50 pounds. Everybody's different, but it appears slashing the number of carbs I consume has had the biggest impact for me. And discovering Built Bars has made the journey a lot easier by replacing my high-carb, high-sugar desserts with something that still tastes like a candy bar, but only has 150 calories, is low-carb, and is packed with protein. If I'm craving a late-night snack, instead of heading to the fridge or pantry for something I know isn't good for me, I just grab a Built Bar. I've used Built Bars as breakfast on a fairly regular basis, which not only keeps me from the unhealthy fast food, but means I also don't waste money on those fast food places either. If low-carb is your life, try Built Bars. Visit WeirdDarkness.com slash Built. Use the promo code WeirdDarkness, all one word, and get 10% off your entire purchase. WeirdDarkness.com slash Built, promo code WeirdDarkness. The Shadow, mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today on the air, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, Hounds in the Hills. In just a moment, The Shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have an important message for everybody. We are now in the midst of the most treacherous season of the entire year. But you can protect your family's health during this danger period by burning blue coal. For blue coal gives you clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you order fuel, insist on blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Your nearest blue coal dealer will be glad to send you a trial ton. Phone him tomorrow. High in the pine-clad hills of North Carolina, where backwoods living is neighbor to palatial winter homes, there is a haunted mansion, relic of former grandeur. With no visible means of support, old Sadie, haggard, half-demented creature, and Jake, a hunchback son, live in one wing of the dilapidated old house. A pack of great, vicious, cross-breed hounds guards the old place from intruders. It is early evening. In the dim half-light, Two figures, led by one of the hounds, approach the house. I don't like it here. I want to go home. What's the matter, little boy? You ain't afraid of my big dog, are you? Yes, I am. I'm afraid of your dog, and I'm afraid of you, too. I want to go home to my mother. I don't want to go with you. I kick my dog wherever I go. He won't hurt you. Not so long as you're with me, he won't. <laughs> and I'll tell him what he'd do to you if he got you alone, Jakey. My name isn't Jakey. My name is Dickie Nelson. Mm -hmm. And if you don't let me go home, my mother will be worried. Now, now, Jakey, don't be scared, old Sadie. I'm your mother. Ah, old Sadie's your mother. <laughs> I didn't know that, did you? You're not my mother. And I don't believe there's other little boys here like you said. <laughs> Mm. 
about your golf's improving. So, Cranston, you don't always miss the ball, eh? Well, that's what a vacation in North Carolina does for you. Especially when you're the host, Mr. Rupert. <laughs> I thought you were always on vacations, Lamont. I've never heard of you doing anything except dabbling in that mysterious laboratory of yours. Yes, just a playboy. <laughs> yes, I just dabble. A little science, a little chemistry, a little psychology. Just dabble. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's calling you, Gary. It's been a hurry. Well, it's the sheriff. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. Perhaps he saw you drive, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rupert. Yeah? Uh, sorry to bother you. Well, what is it, Sheriff? Another child's lost. Gone over the cliff at the border trail. What? Another one? Yes, sir. Little Dickie Nelson this time. Oh, good Lord, Sheriff. This is horrible. Child lost? Is, is that what you said, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Fourth in less than two weeks. Lost? Lost how? On the border trail over the cliff there. Oh, that's awful. Well, what is this trail, Gary? Well, it's a narrow pathway along the rim of a high cliff. Washes out so that a slip on the gravel starts to slide right over the cliff. And you mean to say four boys have been lost there in two weeks? Yes. Four? Yes, but doesn't it strike you there might be something more than just fate causing the disappearance of these children? Well, but what? That I don't know. Gary, I'd like to look at this cliff. <laughs> See how the trail washes out down the cliff? Yes, yes. That's a thousand feet straight down there. It's the river at the bottom. Yeah. I reckon the current must carry the bodies away. We haven't found a trace of them. I don't suppose there's any doubt about what happened to the boys. No, Miss Lynn. When Bobby Mina disappeared last week, we found a ball he'd been playing with. Did you call that conclusive evidence? Well, this morning we snared up Dickie Nelson's cap that was caught on some shrubbery part way down the mountain. Hmm. Of course, some of the colored folk around here think ghost done it. Ghost? Yeah. See, they were howling last night about the time Dickie was lost here. What kind of howling, Sheriff? Down to find no sir. They say they heard it the three times the other boys were lost. But you know how they are. Colored folks up here in the hills is superstitious. Yes. But what kind of a howl does a ghost make in this part of the country, Sheriff? Well, that's what I asked. About near they could describe it, it was like a dog howling. Hound dog. Well, I've generally found that a dog howling means a dog. Perhaps I'd better reverse the usual procedure, the dog trailing a man. It's all very mysterious, Lamont. Yes, it is, Margot. Will you excuse me for a moment, Sheriff? Yes, yeah, certainly, Mr. Frank. Margot, I think the shadow will look into this mystery. But how? Go back to the house, Margot. I'll wireless you. I need help. In my invisible state as the shadow, I'm going to follow the clue of the dog's. Let's see where it leads me. <laughs> I want to go home. Don't cry, Dickie. Don't cry. Hmm? What's that? Who are you? I've come here to help you. You're Dickie Nelson, aren't you? Yes, sir, but... Who are you? It's so dark, I can't see you. You don't need to see me, Dickie. Pretend I'm just a shadow. But you can hear me. Yes, sir, but I want to go home. Here, here, you've got to be a man, Dickie. I'll try to get you home. But you've got to stop crying and help me. I'm scared, that's why. Haven't you got a handkerchief? No, sir. Here, use my handkerchief. Thank you. Now dry your eyes and wipe your nose. I want you to tell me something. Yes, sir. Are there any other boys here? Yes, sir, three of them. How did you get here? I believe the ghost story, Dickie. And I looked for a ghost who howled like a hound. And then I just walked. But I didn't find a ghost. I found what I expected to find. A dog. In fact, lots of them. Didn't they see you? No. Didn't old Sadie or Jake see you? No, it's dark in here. But even with the light on, people can't see me because I've learned how to make them think they don't see me. I blind their eyes to me. How? Never mind how. You must believe it and don't be afraid of me. I'm your friend. Yes, sir. Trust me, Dickie. Perhaps I can find a way to get you and the other boys out of it. Quiet. Somebody coming. 
Sheriff well, finds these kids here, they'll hang us, you crazy old fool. Hey, now don't you touch my baby. He's my Jesse. And uh, he's you before you came a hunchback. If you kill him, you'll be killing yourself. He's you, Jake. You keep away from me. Don't you touch me. Jake, don't touch that boy. Who's that? I hear it too. Give me that lamp. I hear it too, Jake. Uh, nobody's in here but us. Us and the kid. He got out. No, I'm still here. Voice. Mm. Ain't nobody with us. I hear it too. Well, that's nothing, Jake. I'm always hearing voices. <laughs> and now you're hearing them. Now we're both crazy. <laughs> uh, reckon it ain't so crazy a voice can scare me. If I'm crazy like you, then voices ain't real. Now put this kid out of the way, no. and then I'll get the others. No, no stop. Please don't hit me with that stick. No, 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 Jake. Put down no, that no. stick, Jake. Put it down. Now, I ain't scared of voices that ain't real. I said drop it. Uh, who hit me? Look. Look at that place on my wrist. Look. <laughs> well, Jake, I've been hearing voices for a long time, but I ain't never been hit by one. You done it. Oh, I did not. I wasn't near you. Then it was the kid. I never moved. Well, then who? I hit you, Jake. Now I'm going to give you a chance to save yourself. Let this boy go. Bring the other boys here. I'll take them home. No. No, they're mine. They're mine. They're Jake. No. I'll get rid of them my way. Please help me. I want to go home. Trust me, Dickie. There's only one thing for me to do now. Jake, this is your last chance. All right. Who's that? Uh, you reckon it's somebody looking for the kids? If it is. Jake, it must be them. The Duke and Slim coming to hide out. Ah, uh, listen. Yeah, it's him. Oh, Jake, he'll kill us both. He knows about my baby. Well, what he don't know won't hurt him. Shut the door to the kids' room and lock it. Yeah, hurry up, Jake. Let him in. But don't say a word about my baby. Don't worry. Yeah. Maybe I'm crazy, too, but I ain't that crazy. Well, what took you so long, Jake? Well, I do. Come in, Slim. Hurry up. Shut the door. Okay, Duke. Yeah, what a dump this is. It's better than being in jail up north. If we didn't have this hideout, that's where you'd be. Oh, hello, old Sadie. <laughs> Come in, Duke. <laughs> I'll flap to you again. <laughs> Shut up. That half-witted old Dane talks too much. Hey, you staying for a while, Duke? What's it to you? I don't care. Oh, lay off the guy, Slim. Jake, and you too, old Sadie. Yeah? We're taking a little rest away from the cops. See? Turn the dogs loose in the yard around the house so they can chew up anybody that comes here looking for us. Go on, Jake. Do it now. All right, Duke. Just a minute, Jake. Who's that? Somebody's in here, Duke. <laughs> The voice again, Jake. They can't hear it unless they're crazy, too. That voice again. Yes, Jake, that same voice. And the Duke can hear it, too. Can't you, Duke? Say, hey, what's going on here? Who is that? I tell you, it's in here, Duke. Who's playing tricks on me? Duke, did you ever hear of the shadow? The shadow? I have, Duke. I know, that's the guy that talks to you, but you can't see him. Shut up, you fool. Yes, yeah, Shadow. I've heard about you. I never believed what I heard, though. You can believe it now. Listen, Duke. I'm here for only one purpose. To save the lives of four little children. Oh, don't believe him. It's a lie. Shut up. I'm handling this. Go ahead, Shadow. Go ahead. Talk some more. All right. Old Sadie and Jake there have put you in a tough spot. How, Shadow? Old Sadie is crazy. She's, well, shall we say, borrowed. Four little boys from places near here and made it appear that they were killed. Killed, falling over a cliff. Oh, it's a lie. They was killed. I killed them and my jetty took their place. Duke, the old dame is back. Shut up. Jake here is almost as crazy as his mother, but he wants to kill the boys. Uh, don't believe him, Duke. Either way, you'll be arrested for kidnapping. Hey, Duke, we don't want no part in kidnapping. Well, Shadow... What's the proposition? If you let me take the boys away back to their homes, you won't be accused of kidnapping. And give you a chance to tip off the police to where we're hiding out? <laughs> oh, no. Let him have it, Slim. Hey, look, Duke, the door. He went out the door. He's gone, Duke. He's gone. We can't get him now. Oh, yes, we can. How? Ah, the dog. <laughs> if the shadow's a man, them dogs can follow his pants. <laughs> if the shadow is a man, you mean the dogs will trail him by his scent? Even though we can't see him? She's right, Duke. But we haven't got anything to give the dogs to smell to give them the scent. 
Maybe he left something in the kid's room. Let's go and see. Yeah. Come on, let's see. Yeah, let's let's look around here. Ah, he's too clever to have left anything behind. Hey, where'd the boy get that handkerchief he's sniffling into? Handkerchief, huh? Yeah. He never had no handkerchief when he come here. Uh, who gave you this handkerchief, little boy? A man. What man? A man who spoke to me in the dark. You couldn't see him? No. He said I had to believe he was here, although I couldn't see him. <laughs> then it's the shadows. Get the dogs. Get the dogs. They can get a scent from that handkerchief and trail him. The shadow can't escape this time. The Shadow's Adventure continues in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to say a few words about a subject that's uppermost in everyone's mind these days, how to save money. Large savings in cooking and heating costs can be made by switching to blue coal. For blue coal is the perfect home fuel. It is the best grade of Pennsylvania anthracite. And anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, cooking stoves, and parlor heaters in New England were designed to use. Blue coal gives off a steady, clean heat. It lasts longer and burns down to a fine, powdery ash without giving off smoke or grime common to many other fuels. Blue coal's cleanliness will appeal to New England housewives. For housekeeping is greatly simplified when blue coal is used because with this dependable fuel... You not only have a more comfortable home, but a cleaner house inside and out. These are the reasons why blue coal is so popular in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Sales in Pawtucket this winter are 12% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. Here's another point. You buy American when buying blue coal. It is mined and prepared in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company, especially for home use. So for economy and cleanliness, start using blue coal tomorrow. Order it by name. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. anymore, trying to lose us among the trees in the dark so he can go back to the house and finish off them kids? Let him have it. Okay, boss. I wasn't. Honest, I wasn't. Okay. Then come on. Hey, you, Jake. Ain't those dogs left to turn on us? Yeah, if you was alone. Yeah, but I'm with you. <laughs> you hear that, Duke? The dogs have got the shadow. Uh, it's lucky for us he left his handkerchief with the kids so the hounds could get the scent, ain't it, huh? Yeah. Now... There's only one or two things for the shadow to do. Stand and be chewed by them beasts, or else climb a tree. He's not invisible to a dog's nose. They can smell him. If he's climbed a tree, we got him, Duke. Hey, there's the dog jumping around that tree. Right there. See him? Well, what do we do now? Well, we can't do much while it's dark. What do you mean? I mean we got to keep the shadow treed until it's daylight. Yeah, but you can't see him, whether it's light or dark. That's right. Maybe he's beating us after all. Listen, if we wait till daylight, then we can see where he is in the tree. But you can't see where he is. Yeah, but when he comes, he has to shake the branch he's sitting on. And when we see any of them leaves shaking, we'll shoot right at that place. It'll be like shooting at nothing. I know. Hey, if we don't get him that way, he has two other things to choose from. Yeah, what's that? We can keep him treed until he gets so weak he can't work his invisibility gag anymore. And he comes down. And then the dogs get him. Well, there's nothing to do but wait till morning then. No. But we got to keep awake. Morning ain't far off. And then we'll see. Hey, Duke. I got to thinking, sitting here last night. What about them kids? Well, Slim, what about them? We didn't do it. 
But they can't pin a kidnapping rap on us. Not without evidence, Slim. No, but she... Oh, I get it. No evidence, huh? That's right. No kid. What do you think? Yeah. Jake here don't want no evidence either. As soon as we dispose of the man who calls himself the shadow, no one will know. And then Jake here gets rid of the kid. That's right. Yeah, but how about Jake and old Sadie? I think they could uh, disappear and not be missed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, Thoke, look. We can see the whole tree now. But I don't see nobody. No, of course not. But he's there. Now watch carefully, Slim. There's no wind. Any limb or branch that moves may be the shadow. Yeah. So when something moves, let him have it. I get it. Hey, but how do we know when we get him? He'll come down, Slim. <laughs> now you miss, Slim. Take your time. Hey! What's that? I thought I saw a branch move. We're shooting at the shadow, Jake. And when he's unconscious or dead, we can see him all right. And then... <laughs> you didn't do so good yourself, Duke. Uh, those dogs are hungry. Yeah. I bet they look nice from up in the tree, waiting for their breakfast. How can you shoot him if he can't see him? Shut up, Jake. Now, take your time, Slim. Good morning, Duke. He's there. Good morning, Shadow. I hope you slept well. Oh, yeah. And you? Now, watch closely. Yeah, yeah. Would it be too much for me to ask, how are the little boys? They're all right, Shadow. So far, that's good. Yeah, but I'll get rid of him. Slim, get around the other side of the tree. I think he's low in the tree, behind the trunk. Okay, Duke. We're taking care of you first, Shadow. You know too much. <laughs> well, what's funny, Shadow? I'm laughing at you, Duke. Oh, yeah? You laugh different when I get my hands on you. Why don't you come up here and try it? I don't have to. You'll come down. You'll have a long wait. Oh, yeah? Can't you say anything but, oh, yeah? You're really quite stupid, Duke. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm smart enough to get you out of that tree. Good. I was getting rather bored. Ah, oh, shut up. Hey, Slim. Go back to the house and get an axe. This tree ain't too big to cut down. Very ingenious. Yeah, but the dogs. It ain't safe to leave without Jake. The dogs, they won't touch you. They're mm -hmm. after the shadow. And Jake will keep them here. Sure, sure. I'll keep them here, sure. And hurry back, Slim. Now, Slim. Okay, Duke. But don't let them dogs come after me. Jake will keep the dogs here. Okay, watch it. Now, now hurry back, Slim. <laughs> Hey, Jake, call the dogs off. They're going after Slim. Hey, they don't like him. They call him back. Slim, look out. Jake, the dogs are attacking him. Yeah, they're going to eat him. I'll shoot him, Slim. Ah, guess you, you didn't shoot him soon enough, Duke. Well, Jake, your dogs got Slim. I'm afraid you've lost most of them. Yeah. Ma will be awful mad. There's only Big Tom left. But the Duke will shoot him. No, he won't. His gun's empty. Look at him go up that tree. Yeah. Big Tom didn't get him. Now you're both up in the tree, ain't you? No, Jake. I'm standing right here behind you. Now do what I tell you. Go over to that tree and tie Big Tom to it. So that the Duke can't get down. Why should I? You want to get those kids out of the way, don't you? Duke won't let you. Yeah. He won't, maybe. Yeah, he won't let me, maybe. Hey, I won't tell him what I'm going to do. Jake, call off this dog. Tie him up, do you hear me? Tie him up. No, not to my tree, you dope. Take him away. Listen to me. Don't tie him there, you half-wit. Well, Duke, we change places. I'll get you if it's the last thing I do, Shadow. You're going to have plenty to do before we meet again. Jake, come back here. Yeah. You'll I'm have there. plenty of time to think about that. Here are some men that may help you out. Who are they? Uh, my Lord, what happened here? I don't know, Sheriff. See, this is the hunchback, Jake. Hello, Jake. Duke's up in the tree. Yeah, sit down, Sheriff. I got him. Reckon that dog won't attack anyone else. You killed him! Now, if our friend will come down out of the tree, I'll be delighted to put a pair of handcuffs onto him. I've been looking for him and his partner for some time. 
from the looks of things, I won't need to put the cuffs on his partner. Well, Marco, you better go back to the cars. All right. Yes, I think I will. I, I only wanted to see if... Yes, I'll go back. All right, men. Let's take him away. Marco. Marco. Oh. Oh, Lamont. Lamont, are you all right? Yes, but don't speak my name here. Darling, I was so frightened when I got your wireless message. I, I thought it was the end. So did I. Are the boys all right? Yes, all the boys are safe. They've been taken into town. A deputy sheriff took old Sadie along. Vicki Nelson is in one of the cars up the road waiting. Oh, Lamont, I feel so sorry for that poor old woman. So do I, Margot. She's demented. We must see that she's placed in an institution, not a prison. A place where she can satisfy her mother love mania with dolls instead of other people's children. Go to the car, Margot. I'll meet you there. For Miss Lane, I want to go home to my mother. Just a minute, Dickie. I'm expecting someone. Who? Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Margot. Hello, Lamont. Who is this young man? This is Dickie Nelson. Dickie and Lamont Cranston. Hello, Mr. Cranston. Well, Dickie, I hear you had quite an adventure last night. Yes. A kind man came to my room at that terrible house, but I couldn't see him. Well, maybe you dreamt it, Dickie. Supposing we keep it a secret, just between us three. Yes, I think that's a good idea. All right. But it was a swell dream. And here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with some interesting information for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. The health and comfort of your family during this period of widely varying temperatures depends to a great extent on whether your heating plant delivers steady, even heat when you need it. And the efficiency of your heating plant depends upon the proper use of furnace dampers. Here are some helpful hints on the proper use of these dampers. First, the turn or the smoke pipe damper should never be used for day-to-day -day control of heat. This damper should always be kept as nearly closed as possible without retarding the free burning of your fire. If you do not have automatic thermostat control of your furnace, the everyday control of heat should be left to your check damper that flap-like damper located on your chimney pipe and the ash pipe damper. To get more heat through your house, close the check damper and open the ash pit damper. Always remember, when one is closed, the other should be open. If the house is warm enough, close the ash pit and open the check damper. The proper location of these dampers is important. The check damper should be between the chimney and turn damper, the latter being between the check damper and the furnace. If the dampers are in this position... They are properly placed. And if operated in the manner that I've just explained, you should not experience any trouble in maintaining an even temperature in all parts of your home. However, if you do have trouble with your furnace, phone your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay serviceman to your home. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And friends, take Mr. Barclay's tip. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer. Have him send a John Barclay serviceman to your home tomorrow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. And be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort.
If you like what you're hearing on Weird Darkness, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can find information on sponsors you heard during the show, listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, get the email newsletter, find other podcasts that I host. You can visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. And if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell of your own, you can click on Tell Your Story. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. The Shadow, mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Cole brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The Plot Murder. In just a moment, The Shadow's exciting adventure will begin. Meanwhile, I have something important to tell all you homeowners. During this treacherous winter season, you can protect your family's health by burning Blue Cole. For Blue Cole's harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of clean, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. Blue coal saves you money, too, for it burns steadily, completely, down to a fine, powdery ash. So next time you're buying fuel, ask for blue coal by name. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. An important announcement. Just before going on the air with today's adventure of The Shadow, we received a telegram from the American Police Review, presenting The Shadow with a special award. Be sure to hear this official presentation at the close of this program. And now, Lou Cole presents The Shadow in the Plot Murder. Read the findings of this court martial. We find the accused, Lieutenant John Wilson, guilty of treasonable sabotage against the government. No! In that he willfully destroyed a secret device known as the flying torpedo, invented by one George Achilles and acquired exclusively for use by the government. Has the prisoner anything to say before sentence is pronounced? Yes. Yes, but I... what can he say? He admits he broke the mechanism on the demonstration torpedo. Quiet, please, Professor Achilles. As the inventor, we understand your concern in this matter. But please don't interrupt. Well, Lieutenant Wilson? I... I, I, I don't know, sir. I, I can hear all that's going on, but I... I went into it's the... It's obvious, General Levitt, that Lieutenant Wilson is not mentally accountable. He was sufficiently accountable to enter the testing shed by virtue of his authority as an army lieutenant and to tamper with the flying torpedo and render it useless the very day it was to be demonstrated to the government. Read the sentence of the court. Lieutenant Wilson, this court decides, subject to the approval of the president, that you will be dishonorably discharged from the service of your country and sentenced to imprisonment for the term no! of... No! That... No! Oh, God, he's got a revolver! Don't shoot! That's me. the man, Professor Archelis! <laughs> he's wounded, Professor Archelis! Call the doctor. Take Lieutenant Wilson back to his cell. And I tell you, John Wilson can't be guilty. He just can't. Well, why not, Margaret? After all, traitorous army officers are not unknown to history. Yes, but the peculiar way John Wilson talked on the stand makes me think there's something strange about the whole thing. He acted, well, almost like a man in a trance. Lamont, just what is this flying torpedo he's supposed to have tampered with? That's what its name implies, a sort of aerial torpedo filled with high explosives flying under its own power. Once it's launched into the air, instead of flying a predetermined course, its direction can be guided by radio beams from an observation plane. 
flying high above it. Oh, I see. You imagine its tremendous effectiveness in warfare, deadly accuracy, and hitting even a fast-moving target like a, a troop train or a supply ship. Sounds tremendously important. Who invented it? This man, Archelaus, who was to demonstrate it last week at the proving grounds before a large delegation from the capital. Besides being members of the War Department, a great many high officials and other branches of government were to attend the test. Well? Since your friend Wilson gained access to the laboratory and put the flying torpedo out of commission, the test has been postponed until tomorrow. And who is Archelaus? Where did he come from? A famous foreign inventor. He's quite a reputation abroad. Lamont, you don't suppose it's possible Archelaus has the boy under some strong mental influence? It's possible. They've got Wilson temporarily in the city jail. Won't you call on him as the shadow? Margot, do you honestly think that this case warrants my attention as a shadow? Lamont, I don't ask many favors, but I have the feeling John Wilson is innocent. All right, Margot. You're really serious. The shadow will pay a call on John Wilson in the city jail. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. These parts that General Levitt gave me. Do you take it or do I keep it? And you better keep it, sir, in case you want to use it again. Yes, that's right. You'll uh, you'll have to talk to Wilson through the bars. Uh, no one's allowed in his cell. Thank you. I have no desire to go in. I already have one arm in a sling due to the young man's temper. There's only one or two questions I want to ask him, then I leave. Very well. Don't get excited, Lieutenant Wilson. I only came to tell you that you're a much better mechanic than a marksman. Your bullet only injured my arm. I'm only sorry I didn't... didn't kill me. The only way you can break the spell I have over you, isn't it? To kill me. Will somebody come? Stop. Look in my eyes. No. Look. No, I won't. John Wilson, look in my eyes. No! Look in my eyes, Wilson. Oh. That's right. Oh. Now repeat after me. I destroyed the torpedo. I destroyed the torpedo. Say it. I... I destroyed the torpedo. Sabotage against my country. Sabotage against my country. I am guilty. I am guilty. Then that is all you remember. <laughs> Are you sure that's all he remembers, Professor Arcalis? Who said that? Guard. You are there? No, not the guard, Professor. You hide somewhere. In the next cell, perhaps. No, I'm here. In the shadows, Professor Arcadus. Perhaps you've heard of me. Who are you? The shadow. The shadow? Help me. Help me. I am your friend, John Wilson. Think now. Concentrate. What is it you're trying to remember? It's, it's that torpedo. Dangerous. I... Wilson, keep I... quiet. Steady now. Think. Think. You can break through this spell. I, I, I tried to make them understand that. I destroyed the torpedo because... I command you to stop. John. Your friends believe in you. They're trying to help you. Wilson. What have you committed? Archelaus passed there. We must weaken our 
Stand ready for another call. Tonight I'm going to pay a surprise visit to Professor Archelis at his hotel. I have a feeling that if we're not successful in getting Wilson to talk, this country of ours may suffer a terrible disaster. Farah, lock the door. Did anyone follow you here to the hotel? No, no one, Professor Achilles. Good. The test will take place tomorrow? Yes, at three o'clock. The War Department is so convinced your invention will render any nation possessing it invincible that the high command of both the Army and Navy are to be there to witness the test. The President, too? Yes, the President and the Vice President expect to attend, together with the Secretary of War and the Secretary of the Navy. So they've fallen into my trap. They'll be blown off the face of the earth just as I planned. I'll have to be sure you make a final inspection before the torpedo is taken out of the ground and see that the steering mechanism is set. I understand. But since I am your chief assistant, they might ask me to go along with them. No, they won't. I'll fix that. Their bungling army mechanics think they understand the flying torpedo perfectly. So to satisfy their pride, I've let them take complete charge of the demonstration. Good. Don't worry, Barra. And afterwards... Afterwards, with the guiding brains of the nation wiped out at a single stroke, the country will be thrown into confusion, disorganized. So we'll have nothing to fear. I see. There are only two things that bother me slightly, though. Lieutenant Wilson, for one... Wilson? Did he really discover the secret trick of the steering mechanism? Yes, he knows what we intend to do and how we intend to do it. You should have disposed of him at once. I thought of that. I was afraid it would arouse suspicion. I'm keeping Wilson under mental hypnotic control until it's too late for him to stop us. Wouldn't it be better if he were dead? Perhaps. I can still visit him at the prison. And what is the other thing that bothers you, Professor? Only a shadow, Barnas. But I'm not quite sure of the extent of its power. A shadow? Don't worry. I think I can take care of it, too. Listen. What is it? I thought I heard footsteps outside in the hall. Go and look. Here. All is empty. Uh, must be my nerves. I'll be glad when this is all over. Our escape is taken care of? Yes, the freighter will be waiting for us at South Pier. But go now, Carl. And success to you. Good night, Professor. Good night, Barlow. Uh... The shadow. I can't put my willpower against the shadow. Then I deserve to lose. And I've never yet... <laughs> Good evening, Professor Archelis. You? The shadow, you've come? Yes, Professor. Why do you hold Lieutenant Wilson in the hypnotic spell, Professor? I don't know what you're talking about. We shall see. And now I have something else to tell you. What? Wilson knows something about you, Professor. And I'm going to find out what it is. All right, Shadow. You know a little, but you'll never learn more from Wilson. No one can break the spell, not you, nor all your childish magic. You forget. Greater magic, Archelaus. What? Death. Death? Yes, it's on the way, Professor. But I can promise you this. If any blood is shed, it will be yours. Not the shadows. <laughs> the second part of the shadows adventure will continue in just a moment. Meanwhile, here's some interesting information. Every day, more and more families throughout this area are saving money on their heating and cooking bill. These families are getting better and more economical heat than ever before with blue coal. Blue coal is anthracite. It is an American product mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company who are deeply grateful for the purchases of blue coal by families throughout this area. Today, blue coal is the largest selling brand of home fuel in America because it is the only fuel that so satisfactorily combines all of the essentials necessary for perfect heating results. It is superior in quality, cleaner than most fuels, and economical because it burns long and steadily down to a fine powdery ash. Furthermore, there can be no substitution when ordering blue coal because it is the only solid fuel actually trademarked with a blue tint so that you can identify it at a glance. 
These are a few reasons why in Watertown, New York, blue coal sales this winter show a 29% increase over the same period a year ago. So take a tip from Watertown, New York family. Order blue coal by name. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. But I, I tell you, General Levitt... Excuse me, Colonel Sonny. Go right ahead, General. <clears throat> Hello? General Levitt speaking. Oh, yes. Good morning, Captain Hines. That's fine. You have the flying torpedo loaded and ready for the demonstration? Good. I'll expect a report. Sorry, I can't be with you. Good night. Now, Cranston, to get back to this Lieutenant Wilson, I don't see what I can do. But there may be some desperate plot at the bottom of this. Wilson acts as if he'd been put under some powerful hypnotic spell. He might know something about this flying torpedo that you ought to know. For heaven's sake, Cranston, I haven't time to listen to any sort of drivel. I know you're a very agreeable young man, and you mean well, but you're letting your imagination run away with you. Now, if you don't mind, I must get ready to leave for the capital. Very well. Just do me one favor, General Everett. might prove something to you. Well, what is it? Suggest to Professor Archelaus that he be present with the other official visitors at the proving ground. The demonstration starts. Well, of course, Professor Archelaus will be there. Why shouldn't he be? That's what I'd like to know. Unless I'm very much mistaken, General, Professor Archelaus has made arrangements to be far, far away from the scene of his triumph. Uh, George Cranston, I believe you know something. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, well? There are two gentlemen here to see you, sir. Professor Archelaus and another man. Oh, all right, show them in. General Levitt will see you, General. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt you, General Levitt. That's all right. This is Mr. Cranston, Professor Archelaus and Mr. Barlow. How do you do? How do you do? If you don't mind, Mr. Cranston, I'd like to speak to General Levitt alone. Not at all. I'm uh, sure you have weighty matters to discuss. Good day, gentlemen. Thanks, Good day. Cranston. Goodbye. Oh, orderly. Yes, General Levitt. Is my luggage ready? Yes, sir. Fine. Then take the next train. Yeah, there's one leaving in 20 minutes. Can you make it? Yes, sir. If I go now, sir. Go ahead, then. I'll close the office. I'll meet you in the capital tomorrow. Yes, sir. Well, what brings you here, Professor? Uh, oh, uh, sit down, Mr. Barlow. Thank you, sir. Barlow here has just returned from the proving ground, General. He supervised the loading of the torpedo early this morning. Everything was all right, I hope? Perfect. Your army mechanics seem very proud they're going to handle the torpedo by themselves. Of course, we'll be anxious to know how it comes out. Oh, aren't you going to be at the demonstration, Professor O'Kelly? I'm afraid not. Uh, another engagement, unfortunately, prevents my attending. Oh, yes, I see. But I can't understand how anything could be more important to you than seeing your own invention demonstrated before the highest officials of our government. I admit I'm terribly disappointed, General. However, I've left instructions for a telephone message to be sent to me at my hotel the minute the demonstration is over. Mm. Professor, I'm not sure that this test should be made without your being there. What do you mean? Suppose I order you to go. But no, that's impossible. Why impossible, Mr. Barlow? You must excuse Barlow, General Levitt. He is a little excited. Excited? So what about? Look here, Professor Archelaus. Why don't you want to go to the proving ground? Must I repeat my previous statement? Right, this stalling and hedging is very suspicious. All right, George, you'll go whether you want to or not. Don't touch that phone. I'll have to get them. You can't give me orders in my own office. Huh? You hit him too hard, Barlow. His head was bleeding. He struck the desk when he fell. Yeah, the him is clattered around the door. He knows something, Professor. Yes, he poor suspects something, but how? And we've got to act quickly. I wonder if Lieutenant Wilson has talked what you said. He's still under your hypnotic spell. Perhaps it would be better if Lieutenant Wilson died. Yes. Are going to murder him? No, I'll merely suggest that he kill himself. No, Barlow, if you'll tie up the general. Professor, look at him. What? General Levitt is dead. Well, here's General Levitt's office, Margot. No one seems to be here, Lamont. Well, that's odd. The general was here less than an hour ago. General! General Levitt. Look, here on the corner of the desk. Blood. Word to Commissioner Weston at once. Tell him something has happened to General Levitt. Yes, anything else? Yes, tell him to send a squad of men to South Pier. I overheard Professor Archelaus and Barlock talking about meeting on a freighter there. Where are you going? I'm going to the jail. I'm going to make one more desperate attempt to get John Wilson to talk. You've got to find out what this is all about before it's too late. <laughs> You 
want me to wait here at the jail, Professor Achilles? No, go down to South Pier, Barla. I want to be alone with Lieutenant Wilson. Yes. I'll follow after I've taken care of him. All right. But first, I'll collect the baggage. But you remember only this, Lieutenant Wilson. See always my eyes in front of you. Yes. You will forever do what I tell you to. Stop. Leave me alone. No, never. Look, Wilson. See what I have. A knife. Here. Take it. Now listen to me. You are disgraced. Your family disgraced. You have nothing more to live for. Say it. I have nothing more to live for. I... I have nothing more to live for. Then draw the knife across your wrists. It's easy. Try it. Stop, John. Don't do it. Shut him. He's trying to make me... Keep away from me, Wilson. I've got you by the arm, Wilson. Did you feel the knife yourself? Yes, you've cut me, you fool. Your blood is being shed, Professor. Remember what I told you? Let me out of here. Let me out. He's gone, John. Something's happened to me. I I feel like I can talk now. Then talk. Tell me what you know. Archelaus' spell is weakened. I I can't see you. I don't know who you are, but you've got to help me. I first suspected Archelaus and his crowd when... When I saw that the steering mechanism of the flying torpedo had an extra attachment. An extra attachment? Yes, you see, the flying torpedo is supposed to be steered by radio beams from an accompanying plane. But this extra attachment I'm talking about would would render the radio beams ineffective. In other words, the rudder is set so the torpedo will fly in a complete circle and come back and strike the point from which it was sent, like a boomerang. If it does that in the demonstration today, it will wipe out all the important government officials. Yes, that's their plan. Just as I made the discovery, Archelaus came in, into the workshop. I accused him and... He put me under this spell. I I tried to talk, but I couldn't. Never mind that. Now get in touch with Commissioner Weston. Have him go to the proving grounds. He can stop the test flight of this flying torpedo if he gets there soon enough. Yeah, having us wait around here at the South Pier, there don't seem to be anything stirring. Who are the guys we're supposed to pick up? Uh, two birds by the name of Professor Archelaus and Barloff. Uh, foreigners, huh? Yeah. What are they going to do, make a getaway? I don't know. Commissioner Weston just said to make sure we got them, that's all. Uh, if it had been that important, don't you think the commissioner would have come down here himself? Well, he was coming, but he got a last-minute call to go over the place where they're trying out that new flying torpedo. Oh, yeah, I read about that. All these inventions... Now, wait that... a minute. I'll be coming down the dock. Mm. Hey, you! Hey, stop where you are, I'll shoot. Uh, what's this all about? Nothing. Where are you going? That is my business. What's your name? Come on, what's your name? Are you Barloff? What is it to you? Answer me, are you Barloff? Yes. Well, that's all we wanted to know. Uh, come on, come on. Come on. Where are you taking him? Uh, I have done nothing. Uh, he's got a gun, Sergeant. What? I'm sorry, Sergeant. I had to do it. That's okay. This Archelaus will probably be along in a minute. But this boy behind those says we don't want our killers yeah, to. Hey, look out. Here comes another guy down the dock. All right, quick. Right behind now. this piling here. Come on. It must be our killers. Yeah, right I guess now. so. Professor Archelaus? Who are you? The police. We want to ask you what. Well, you can't get me to talk. You'll never make look me. Out, look out, look out, Sergeant. He's got a gun there. Drop that gun, Archelaus. Take me. The police can't touch me. You asked for it. Oh, you nailed him, Sergeant. Did he get you? Oh, I'm okay. Uh, here comes the parole. Must have heard those shots. Oh, they didn't have time. Oh, Commissioner Weston? Yes, Sergeant. So you got our man? Yep. Is he dead? I don't think so, sir. Well, Archelaus, maybe you'll talk. I'll never talk. (laughs) Commissioner Weston. Shadow, what are you doing here? We can't waste time, Commissioner. Did you stop the test of the flying torpedo? Yes, but... uh... Good. Commissioner, you've saved the lives of thousands of spectators. Nothing of some of our highest government officials. Then it was you. Yes. Yes, I had a friend of mine call you. And now, Professor Archelaus, I have the story. You haven't much time. I know. I 
I'm dying, Shadow. It was a plot against our national defense, wasn't it? It was. Who employed you to do it? That I won't tell you. But Lieutenant Wilson is innocent. Yes. Wilson is innocent. Commissioner, you're a witness. Lieutenant Wilson is cleared. Yes, Shadow. And what about General Levitt? Barloff killed him. Where is Barloff? We got him behind these boxes. How... How did you know about General Levitt, Shadow? We found blood on his desk. But this time the blood is yours, Archelaus. Yes. Mine. Well, Shadow, Archelaus is dead. Yes, Commissioner. And you've been instrumental in averting a national calamity. Archelaus is dead. The innocence of Lieutenant Wilson has been proved. The integrity of the men who protect our liberty is again vindicated. And now, here is John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert, with helpful heating hints for you. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. I've received numerous letters from homeowners asking what they can do to prevent chimney loss... Wasted heat that goes up the chimney instead of through the pipes of your heating system. It's really a simple matter to prevent this, and you will save money on your fuel bill, too. The next time you refuel the fire, move the handle of the turn damper, that plate-like damper inside the smoke pipe, one-sixteenth of an inch toward the closed upright position. Then if the fire still burns too freely, close the turn damper another sixteenth of an inch. Repeat this operation until you've found the correct adjustment. Once you've found this ideal adjustment of the turn damper, mark the position on the smoke pipe with a piece of chalk or something that can be plainly seen. Then leave the damper set at that mark. Remember, the nearer the turn damper is set to a closed position, the smaller the chimney loss and the greater the volume of useful heat. If you follow the suggestions that I give you every Sunday on this program, they should enable you to heat your home with the utmost efficiency and economy. However, if you're experiencing trouble with your heating plant, call your nearest blue coal dealer and ask him to send a John Barclay trained serviceman to your home to inspect your furnace. This service is free to all blue coal customers. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And here's the official telegram advising of the award the American Police Review has made to the Shadow Program. Quote, The American Police Review salutes the producers and sponsors of the Shadow for their contribution to the cause of better law enforcement. 13,000 police executives throughout the United States read the review. So our purpose is to help them find the best tools and methods to combat crime. The editors of the review have turned a critical ear toward the shadow program for some time and are gratified to note that your presentation of police roles truly reflects the intelligence and character of the high type of police officer now found throughout the land. We therefore take pleasure in presenting to you the American Police Review Certificate of Award for Distinguished Service to the Cause of Better Law Enforcement. Signed, J. Norval Birch, editor of the American Police Review, Chicago, Illinois. And so, on behalf of Blue Coal Dealers and of all those who assist in the weekly programs of The Shadow, we tender our thanks and appreciation to editor J. Norval Birch and the American Police Review for their splendid testimonial. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in The Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Anthracite 
will again present another thrilling adventure of The Shadow. Be sure to listen, and be sure to burn blue coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. About a year ago, I began getting tons of notifications about how somebody was trying to log into my social media. I was getting email phishing scams on a daily basis. I was being inundated with email sales pitches from companies I'd never even heard of. I was getting calls and texts from those same companies. I was listening to a podcast that talked about Incogni, short for incognito, and I thought I'd give it a try. For the past year, Incogni has reduced the number of email and spam calls and texts that I receive, it's helped to protect my identity from hackers, and helps keep my data safe. Over the past year, Incogni has successfully removed my personal information from over 200 different data brokerage sites, and I get regular updates on how many are still in progress, how many have been successfully completed, and how many requests were sent out to remove my personal information. It would have taken me over 160 hours to do all of this, and nobody has time or patience for that. Fortunately, it's all taken care of by Incogni. I live online, personally and professionally, and I trust Incogni to help me live with a lot less worry. You can give Incogni a try right now by visiting WeirdDarkness.com slash Incogni. That's short for incognito. I-N-C-O-G-N-I. WeirdDarkness.com slash Incogni. Radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shops, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The Bride of Death. The Shadow begins his exciting adventure in just a moment. Meanwhile, I'd like to make a suggestion to all you homeowners. To protect your family's health and save real money in the bargain, burn Blue Coal. For Blue Coal gives you uniform, healthful, economical heat all winter long. Its harmless blue coloring is your guarantee of better heat at less cost. So when you're buying fuel, insist on Blue Coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest hard coal. Order a trial ton from your nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. Captain Money at this hour of the night. May I come in? Oh, all right. I, uh, I'm the Reverend Colby from the fishing village below. I want to see Mrs. Ackley. She has retired. Come tomorrow. I must see her tonight. Why? My daughter, Isabel, is here. She's Mrs. Ackley's companion, but I've come to take her home. Ah, because Isabel, she does not wish to leave. I've come to fetch her. I'm a man of the cloth, a man of peace. I will not leave without her. Let me by. Parker, Matar, visitor, stop him. Yes, Master, at your command. Let go of me. Take your hands off me, you heathen devils. Would you not? Keep him out. Wait. Mrs. Ackley. I will see him. How dare you break into my house this way, Reverend Colby. Because I will not have my daughter stay in a house that harbors evildoers, Mrs. Ackley. There's talk in the village of heathen rites performed by this man who calls himself prophet of the ancient one. This man you brought to a Christian place from some Asiatic sinkhole of the godless. Be careful how you speak in the presence of the prophet. You mean that man there? Yes, minister. I am the prophet. Prophet? Where is my daughter Isabel? She is leaving this house on the cliff tonight. Tell Reverend Colby she does not wish to go. I... Tell him, Mrs. Ackley. Your daughter Isabel 
does not wish to go. Good night, Reverend Colby. I I do not believe you. Let me see her. Let her tell me herself. She does not wish to see you. Get beyond the iron gates quickly, for in five minutes my servants will release my trained guardians. I'm not afraid of that unholy pack of black panthers of yours. They are dangerous, Minister. Trained in my native land. Trained to hunt and kill animals or men. Go now. Very well. I'm going, but I'll be back. I'll be back. Stop it. Why? Why did the panther scream? It is an omen of death. Who's death? Tell me. The future is so plain to you. Tell me who is going to die. I see the minister, Reverend Colby, standing in the pulpit of his church, turning these simple fishing folks against you, Mrs. Ackley. Reverend Colby is going to die. But how? The wrath of the ancient one will strike him down with the voice of thunder and the tongue of fire. <laughs> ago this night, I went to Mrs. Ackley's house on the cliff to bring my own daughter, Isabel Colby, home. But I could not see her, could not speak to her. She is lost to me, and therefore let my own sorrow be a warning to those of you in this village whose sons and daughters may go to that house of the devil, to this man who dares desecrate the name of prophet. Now, let us offer a prayer for the mistress of Casamani. Though rich in worldly goods and worldly knowledge, and so long one of us, kindly and generous until of late, and now ailing in mind and spirit, who hath turned from God to follow the pathway of a disciple of Satan, let us pray. We beseech thee, have mercy on this poor lost one who has strayed from the fall. And so in the midst of those who perished with him and whom he loved so well... We return the body of our beloved minister, Reverend Colby. Return him to the earth, ashes unto ashes, dust unto dust. Yes, but where, Lamont? The fog's so thick, I can't see a thing. This is the little village where the Reverend Colby and ten of his parishioners were killed by a mysterious explosion in his church. Oh, that was horrible. But, Lamont, it happened days ago. What can we do? Murder has been committed, Margot. Wholesale murder. And the killer or killers are still at large. But according to the newspaper report... Yes, I know. The paper said the authorities have been unable to uncover a possible motive. Investigation is hampered by the refusal of the fisher folk of this quaint little village to cooperate. Oh, perhaps they're afraid to talk, Lamont. Yes, it's surprising what superstition can do. What about this rich Mrs. Ackley you were talking about, Lamont? Where does she fit into the picture? I don't know, Margot. All I know is that about three months ago, she returned from the Far East with a man who calls himself the Prophet. This man claims to be the leader of a cult worshipping a deity known as the Ancient One. Is there such a cult? There was, but it was stamped out nearly five centuries ago because its ceremonies and rituals included human sacrifice. Human sacrifice? Yes. Oh, how horrible. Then you think there is a connection between the so-called prophet, the destruction of this Christian church, and the murder of Reverend Colby? Margot, I don't know. I'm going into that cottage down the road. There are some Christians. I'll wait in the car. Oh, that awful... 
awful foghorn. It gives me the creep. And you'll be safe here, Margot, but don't get out of the car. All right. Now, Lamont Cranston and the Shadow are going to find out something more about this mystery of the house on the cliff. Don't answer. And why not, Marthy? You think it's a ghost from the marshes or that devil from the cliff house? Yes. Who's there? Don't open the door, sir. Stranger, I've lost my way in the fog. Well, tell him there's but one road back to the mainland. Uh, leave this to me, Marthy. Where, uh, where are you heading for, stranger? Can you tell me how to get to Mrs. Ackley's place, Casa Mane? Yes, I could, but I won't. Wait, don't close the door. I'd like to ask a few questions. Uh, questions, huh? Well, ask him, but I'll not warrant an answer to anybody going to that house. You needn't be afraid of me. <laughs> I am Captain Seth. Uh, Fifty years I've sailed before the mast, and I'm not afraid of man, devil of the sea. Uh, who be you? I'll tell you this much, Captain Seth. I'm yes? here to put an end to the thing that made your wife afraid to let you open this door. I can't see you out there in the dark, but... Uh, uh... Seth! Huh? Those Panthers, they've come down to village again. What? Panthers? <laughs> Who's are they? The prophets. Uh, step into the house, stranger. They'll tear a man to pieces. <laughs> well, what ails you, Marthy? The blue light. It's him coming in the gate. He always carries it. It's him, the one that calls himself the prophet. Well, let him come. Get in the house, stranger. Well, Marthy, there's nobody here. Where is that fellow gone? He was here a second ago. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he run for it. Yes. What do you suppose that prophet fellow wants of us? Get away from the door, Marthy. I'll deal with him. Good evening, my good captain. Stop where you be. I'll not have the likes of you in my house. A stranger came here. His car is down the road. The spirit of the ancient one told me of his coming. Who was the stranger? Where has he gone? To all your questions, I'll give you one answer. Get your howling beasts and your heathen godless self back to the house on the cliffs, or I'll blow you to the very door of Hades. No man threatens the prophet. And leave him. Get out! Very well, Captain. Since you will not tell me, I will find him. My servants are watching his car. We will find him. <laughs> He'll need all the unearthly powers you claim to find a man in this fog. Good night. I'll find him. He can't be far away. <laughs> no. Not far away, but close to you. In the dark shadows and the swirling mist. Who speaks? I am looking for a man with blood on his hands. The blood of a minister and ten innocent people he murdered. Are you a man hiding in the fog? Do not try so hard to pierce the fog. You cannot see me. The shadow. A voice without physical presence. Only a voice. No, my friend. In my native India, such things are known. But not here. The powers of mesmerism have spread beyond the gray monastic walls of the yogi priests. Modern science has advanced their ancient arts. Perhaps. But I am still stronger than you. Strong enough to do what I have set out to and do. what is that? I will not tell you, shadow. And no one... Not even you with your borrowed powers shall stand in my way, for I, I am the prophet, prophet of the ancient one. Master, master, the stranger, he does not return to the automobile, but a young woman is there waiting for him. So, could it be, Shadow, that you are the stranger we seek, that your companion waits for you? Back up. Yes, Master. How oh, quickly I will follow. Seize the girl. She will be useful to us. Very useful. If I cannot reach the shadow, I can reach his companion. Yes, Martha. Matar and the Panthers, watch her. She will not escape. Do you hear, Shadow? Yes, I hear. Save her if you can. You say you are a man. If that is true, then my Panthers will smell you out whether they can see you or not. There's the car. Aka, seize the girl. Matar with the girl. Matar, no, no. Matar, no, no. Come here, come here. Come here, Take her to the house on the cliff. We will keep her with Isabel Colby. She shall be tortured until she tells us what she knows. At the beginning.
beginning of this program, I made you a suggestion. To protect your family's health and save real money in the bargain, burn blue coal. Now, here's the reason for blue coal's superiority. This fine home fuel is selected Pennsylvania anthracite, an American product mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company. An anthracite supplies clean, uniform, healthful heat from cellar to attic, burned steadily, completely, down to a fine, powdery ash. So you see, anthracite combines all of the essentials necessary for a perfect heating result. What's more, anthracite is the fuel that furnaces, parlor stoves, and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn. And the cream of all anthracite is blue coal. No wonder it is the largest selling brand of solid fuel in America. No wonder blue coal sales in Auburn, New York this winter show a 15% increase over sales for the same period a year ago. Blue coal is especially prepared for home use. Every carload is laboratory tested for purity and uniform size before shipment from the mine. And every piece of blue coal is trademarked with an unmistakable blue tint so that you can identify it at a glance. So when you're buying fuel, take a tip from Auburn, New York homeowner. Ask for blue coal by name. You can get it in four popular home sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, and pea. Order a trial done from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. You'll find him listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. I don't know. But who are you and why are they keeping you locked up in this room? Well, I'm Isabel Colby. My father was Reverend Colby, the minister of the little fishing village down the coast. He's dead. He's murdered him. Yes, I know. But you, why are you here? I used to be Mrs. Ackley's companion and secretary before she brought this man, the prophet, to the house. But now, the Hindu has some sort of hold over, over her mind. He calls her a high priestess. And she let him lock me up in here. Oh, how terrible, Miss Colby. What is happening in this house to Mrs. Ackley and to you? Oh, I don't know. It has something to do with a, a ceremony that the prophet says he and Mrs. Ackley must perform. The climax of some strange religious ritual they go through day after day in Mrs. Ackley's private chapel. He's changed it into a place he calls the Temple of the Ancient One. This morning, he came here and said, I am to be what he calls the Bride of Death. They're going to take me to that temple tonight. Do you know why? Yes. To kill me. Oh, no. Mrs. Ackley is the high priestess who's going to sacrifice me to that horrible deity they worship. <laughs> Don't give up hope, Isabel. Oh. There's still a chance we'll get out of this place, both of us. Oh, Lamont, Lamont, why don't you come before it's too late? Maybe this is... Back up. I'm not fit off. <gasps> Don't let him take me. Don't. Isabel Colby, the time has come. The high priestess is waiting to perform her ceremony. In the temple of the ancients. No, no. Yes, master. Take the girl Isabel to the shrine. Tell the high priestess to prepare the girl and herself for the wedding of death. Come. My master commands. No, no. Oh, get your hand off, Colby. Please explain, girl. Yes, master. I kill her now. No. Atala. Take the girl Isabel to the shrine. Wait there for me. Prepare the sacred fires. Purify the sword of the ancient one. The sacrificial altar is ready. And death is waiting for his bride. Yes, my father. No, no, you're going to murder me like you murdered my father. Now, strange girl, I will deal with you. <laughs> no, prophet. You will deal with me. The shadow. Oh, thank heaven you've come. You, the shadow here? Yeah? How? There are panthers chained at every door. It was easy, prophet. Oh, I knew the shadow would come. I knew he couldn't be far away. Oh, you do know the shadow. This slinking coward who fears to show himself. Who hides himself in the shadows. Shadow. The prophet is going to kill Reverend Colby's daughter. He's going to make Mrs. Ackley kill her in some fantastic ceremony. Yes. In a few minutes you will be dead and you cannot stop it. A clever scheme. You've numbed the failing mind of Mrs. Ackley with drugs. Made to do your will, sign a fortune over to you. Your knowledge will not help you now, Shadow. You plan to have Mrs. Ackley commit murder, turn her over to the police, blame her for the death of Reverend Colby, and with a fortune in your hands, discard your role of prophet and disappear. You are clever, Shadow. Yes, that is my plan. It is a pity such a mind as yours will soon be lost to the world. 
Within an hour, after Mrs. Ackley has obligingly murdered the girl Isabel, this house will burn. A tank of gasoline in the cellar will explode. And this will be the funeral pyre of the shadow and his beautiful young companion. But I must go now. They are waiting for me. <laughs> you are not going through that door. It is locked. You lie. It is. Aka! They cannot hear you. They're waiting for you in the temple, and I have the key to the door. You are not too clever, Shadow. Give me the key to the door, or I shoot this girl. Take that gun away from her head. Throw the key upon that table, quick. Don't give him the key. I'm not afraid of him. I shall count to three, Shadow. If I don't get the key, it's a pity. But this beautiful girl shall die. One. Two wouldn't. Two. Three. Ah. You are wise, Shadow. You I'll show you the shadow can do more than warn, threaten, take that. Oh, Lamont. Oh, Lamont, are you all right? Yes, but I'm afraid I knocked the prophet out cold. Now, go take that key, get out of here, down the hall, there's a door, take a prophet's gun, drive to that cottage I visited tonight. Get Captain Zeth to call the villagers. Tell them they can help to avenge the murder of their friends. What are you going to do? They may kill Isabel before I can get help. Never mind. You hurry and get help. All right. I'll go out. I'll get Captain Zeth to round up the people of the village, and then I'll come back. Very well, Margot. I may need your help. Come back to this room. I'll be back in a few minutes. Lamont. Lamont. Yes, Margot? I saw Captain Zeth. The people of the village are coming. He's calling them together. You can't wait for him, Marco. Beyond that door, at the head of the stairs, death is waiting for Isabel Colby. The prophet's followers are there awaiting his appearance. But the prophet's still lying here, unconscious, on the floor. Nevertheless, he will not disappoint them. Lamont, I, I don't understand. Marco, I'm going to ask you to do a very dangerous thing. I want you to put on the prophet's robe, cover your face with a hood, and walk in there as the prophet. Very well. I'll do anything I can. You know that. Do not show your face till you reach the altar. Don't speak. Keep close to Isabel Colby. Watch Mrs. Ackley and leave the rest to me. Yes, Your Honor. I, I understand. I'm ready. Metanalo. Etsilasi Oh, ancient one. Vision of eternal life. Before the, thy altar, the youthful maiden waits. Thy ancient sword, her spirit, to release unto thy own. Her blood is pledged. Her soul is thine. Metana lo eti la si. Kalavara sadamor. All is in readiness, master. Metawa, look. The hood covers the master's face. The hour has come for the ritual to begin. See, Master. The girl Isabel is lashed to the altar of the Ancient One. The sacred fires burn in the jeweled torches. All is in readiness, Master. All as you have commanded. The tower. Bring Mrs. Ackley. Prepare her to make the sacrifice. I... I am ready, ready to do the will of the prophet, to plunge this sword into the girl's heart. But I am afraid. Help me. Give me the sacred drug to give me strength, the will to do the things you have told me I must do, if I am to be high priestess to the ancient one. Look, the tower. It is strange. The master does not speak. Does not answer us. He goes to the shrine alone. Wait. He turns. He is lifting the hood of his robes. But look. It is not the prophet. It is a beautiful girl. It is a strange girl. The one the master stayed below to question about the shadow. What has happened to our master? Why do you wear the robes of the prophet? Uh-uh. You have been tricked. The man you serve as a god is a rogue. A charlatan. A fake. The voice, Medora. That is not the voice of the prophet. It is not the strange girl speaking. See, 
Her lips have not moved. No. It's the voice of the shadow. The shadow? The master warned us to beware of the shadow, Anka. Makawa, the master must be dead. The shadow has killed him. Drop it. The time has come. I must drive this sword into the heart of the bride of death. I will not fail. Don't, don't do it. They're tricking you. They can murder me. And they'll kill you. No. They'll kill you. No, I shall be a high priestess. I shall live forever like the prophet. Like the ancient one. Mrs. Ackley. Mrs. Ackley. Drop that sword. Drop that sword, Mrs. Ackley. Drop it, I say. Drop the sword. Yes. Drop the sword. Oh, I can't. I can't look. This shadow has broken the master's power over this woman. I am free now. Free the spell. Oh, what have I done? He is stronger than the master. We must escape. We must get away. You will never get away. Never leave this house. Okay. The power. The prophet. The devil is in my room. Throw your knife. Kill her. Kill her. I command you. No. No, prophet. We obey you no more. Obey me. You take us. Make us kill. Say you are the true prophet of the ancient ones. You defy me. Stop. Stop the knife. See? The blood runs in his veins. He tells us he cannot die. Now we shall see. The first. Now. Now the shadow will destroy you. He is dead. The shadow spoke the truth, Matawa. He was not the true prophet. The true prophet of the ancient ones was blessed with life. Everlasting. You are right, Arka. Quick, we must get away. Away from this shadow. You cannot escape for long. Your sins will find you out. Oh, Isabel! Isabel! Oh, be your your safe. Oh, thank you. Your Won't you tell me who you are? I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I must remain anonymous until my work is finished. I will have to continue being known only as the shadow. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious, and a similarity to persons living or dead is surely coincidental. <laughs> As you sow evil, so shall you reap evil. Crime does not pay. A shadow knows. Next week, same time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, will again present... Another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. What goes on in the mind of a murderous killer? What is it about some people that lead them to commit murder? Is there something that is different or is it simply a switch that gets turned on? Murderous Minds, Stories of Real-Life Murderers That Escaped the Headlines, offers a look into the lives of individuals who didn't just become killers, but who managed to avoid the media storm that usually accompanies them. Inside, you will hear about people like Sante Kimes, a 65-year-old mother who was driven by greed and who committed multiple murders with her son. Robert James Ackerman, the MBA graduate who murdered three people in order to continue getting lap dances from a stripper that he became infatuated with. Larry Jean Ashbrook, who became deluded into thinking that strangers were accusing him of murder. When he could not take it anymore, he carried out a massacre at the Wedgwood Baptist Church. And more. Each story harbors its own distinct narrative and reasoning for the perpetrators of these heinous crimes, along with the background to the case, their lives, and the aftermath of their actions. Sometimes the truth is more appalling than anything fiction can provide, and Murderous Minds,
proves it once again. Murderous Minds, Volume 1, Stories of Real-Life Murderers That Escaped the Headlines by Ryan Becker, narrated by Weird Darkness host Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample or purchase the title on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. Radio's strangest adventurer, a shadow. Mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you the shadow's latest adventure, The Silent Avenger. The shadow's exciting adventure begins in just a moment. But first, I'd like to remind you homeowners that right now, when winter is changing into spring, is the most treacherous time of all the year. But you can protect your family's health and save valuable dollars by burning blue coal. It's Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. And if you want to read The Adventures of the Shadow in complete novel form, in addition to numerous detective stories, crime problems, and features, simply write us for your copy of The Shadow Magazine, absolutely free. Remember, all you have to do is mail a penny postcard... To Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Send for your free copy of the Shadow Magazine tonight. been duly tried by a jury and found guilty of murder in the first degree. You now appear in this court that sentence may be passed upon you. But before I pronounce sentence, have you anything to say? Yeah. Yeah, I have. Before you pass sentence on me, I'm going to pass sentence on you. You, Judge Wilson, on Sloan, the prosecuting attorney, on those 12 good and true saps on a jury. And on one more, maybe. The guy that really trapped me in the first place. The only guy smart enough to get me. The shadow. Order! Order in the court! That will do, Joseph Brick. You have nothing to say in your own behalf. This is in my own behalf, and you'd better listen, all of you. I know I'm on my way to that death house, to the chair. But I'm warning you. For every day I sit in that death house, one of you will be killed. Starting with the foreman of the jury. He'll die the day I burn. Order! Order in the court! Joseph Brecker, by the power vested in me by the people of this state, I hereby order you to be taken to the state penitentiary, there to be delivered over to the warden, by whom on a certain day determined by this court, he shall in the manner prescribed by law put you to death. And may God have mercy on your soul. Order's adjourned. All right, come on. Clear the court. Right. Outside. Well, it's a sheer bluff, I tell you. How can Brecker kill a whole jury? The DA. Judge Wilson. Yeah, Even the governor. I tell you, he's crazy. Yeah, well, I'm glad I was not that jury. Yeah, you bet. Some guy in jail right now. Brecker's gang are all dead or in jail. I know, but you Please can't. get that crack Yes, the I know. Nobody's ever seen the shadow. He could appear right in this courtroom and not be seen. I'd hate to have anybody like that. Oh, well, Margot, let's get out of here. It must be very flattering to inspire such awe and fear, Lamont. It has its disadvantage, Margot. Unfortunately, the mystery surrounding the shadow inspires fear and terror in the innocent as well as the guilty. The unknown is so often associated with evil. There's no help for it. The shadow must remain a shadow. Lamont, what do you make of Brecker's threat? Do you think it's just bluff? I wish I did, Margot. Meaning? Meaning Lamont Cranston is going to don the shadow's cloak and call on Joe Brecker in prison. See you, Brecker. Okay. Hello, Danny. Hello, Joe. You got five minutes. 
Better make the most of it. Deputies are here from the state trying to take you bye-bye to the big house. I'll be back. Uh, All right. Come on in, Timmy. Sit on the bunk. I want to talk to you. There ain't much time. Hey, it's like a cage where they keep animals, huh, Joe? Lay off that, Danny. Okay, don't get sore. Sit down here and listen to what I got to say. Are they going to kill you, Joe? Yeah, but they're going to pay for it, every last one of them. You know who they are, don't you? I've told you over and over again. Yeah, Joe, you told me. And you know what you're to do. You remember everything I told you. Don't you, Danny? Yeah, yeah, Joe, I remember. I won't forget. When the newspapers say they put you in a death house, I kill one of them. That's right, Danny. And don't forget, these people I told you about, the judge, the jury, that prosecuting attorney are the same ones that drafted you into the army, sent you over to France. But you get shell-shocked, so it's hard for you to remember things. Sure. I won't forget. Hey, will it hurt much when they kill you, Joe? Stop that, will you? Okay, okay, I just want to know. You just keep your mind on the jury and Judge Wilson. Maybe even the governor. You'll get them all, eh, Danny? Yeah. Yeah, Joe. They won't know what hit them. <laughs> That's the stuff, Danny. And I'll just one more thing. There's a guy that may get after you. He's smarter than the cops. He's the one that really got me. You gotta keep away from him. Don't give him a chance to find you. How can I do that? You gotta keep away from home. Don't go near the flat of the old lady. But Ma will worry if I don't come home now. No, Joe. no, she won't, Danny. She'll know you got things to do. All right, Joe. What about the fellow I can't see? Is he dead? Like all my buddies in the war? The ones that talk to me in the dark? No, no, Danny. This guy's different. He ain't dead, he's alive. You can hear his voice, only you can't see him. But if you ever hear his voice, you'll know he's near you. Somewhere in the shadows. Yeah. <laughs> if he talks to me, I'll fix him, Joe. Sure, but not the way you're going to get the others, Danny. Because you can't see him, see? Now, look. You know those old hand grenades you have at home? Yeah. Well, I want you to carry a couple with you. If this guy ever finds you, if he tries to stop you paying him off for killing me... You just pull the pin of a hand grenade and throw it where you think his voice is coming from. That'll get him. All right, Joe. But how will I know when it's him? You'll know all right, Danny. He has a queer kind of laugh. And he calls himself the Shadow. All right, Breaker. Time's up. Come on, you. Okay, okay. So long, Danny. Don't you forget anything. So long, Joe. I wouldn't forget... I wouldn't forget nothing you told him. Come on, you're out this way. Take it up. <laughs> that poor dope. He'll do it all right. He'll fix him. Every last one of them if I burn. Who's that? I heard somebody, but there's nobody there. Hey, God! Are you surprised to find me here, Joe Brecker? Shadow. <laughs> expecting me. And yet prisons are filled with shadows. Shadows in the minds of men walking in the shadow of death itself. What do you want? You put me here, sent me to the chair. Why can't you let me alone? Because your career of murder is not over. Because I know you mean to carry out the threat you made in court. Yeah. Yeah, and you can't stop me, Shadow. I can because you're going to tell me how the jury, the prosecuting attorney, and Judge Wilson are going to be killed. You're crazy. I'm not telling you anything, Shadow. I'm not afraid of you anymore. I got nothing to lose. You are telling me, Brecker. Yeah. You see, I can read your mind. One thought is racing through your mind now. It's mirrored in your eyes. Etched on your brain. You're lying, trying to trick me into telling you. All right, I'll tell you what you're thinking about. You're thinking of a man. He, he acts strangely. He's... That's it. He's shell-shocked. No. Am I right? No, no, stop it. This man is very close to you. I've got it. He's your brother. His name is... Let's see. Danny. Danny, isn't it? No, no, go away. Leave me alone. Thinking that even now your brother, Danny, is hurrying home to get a high-powered rifle out of a trunk. That's true. A rifle equipped with telescopic sights no. and a silencer. You're thinking of Danny's medals for marksmanship. His 
decorations for valor as a sniper. A sniper so cunning he could hide in an open battlefield. Well, I... Pick his enemies off at long range and well... not be seen. That's all I need to know, Brecker. All I need to know. <laughs> no. No, you're crazy. You're just guessing. Well, all right, suppose he is. You won't find him. You won't stop him, Shadow. Shut up, Brecker. Shut up, Brecker. What's beating you? Right. Oh. Hey, shut up, Brecker. What's the matter with you? Who do you think you're talking to? Well, it's a shadow. He's here in the prison. I... Yeah, well, don't let that worry you, Brecker. There's plenty of shadows where you're going. Come on. Deputies are waiting, and you're heading for the last mile. <laughs> And every one of you jurors are in danger. You shouldn't be here on the street. This death threat may seem like a lot of hooey to you, but I've been assigned to guard you. And if anything happens, they'll send me back to pounding a beat. Well, I'm sorry, Inspector, but I've got my business to attend to, and I can't hide in my office. <gasps> Hanson, what's the matter, man? Oh, look at him. He's down. Uh, what's the matter with that man? What's going on here? Keep back. Get back. Uh, who are you? Greg, homicide squad. Man's been shot. Ah, uh, you're crazy. I didn't have no shot. I Neither did I. Just the same, he's got a bullet right between the eyes. Looks like Joe Brecker is keeping his word. Lamont, can't you do something? Can't you find Danny Brecker? No. No, Margot. He got away. He hasn't been near his mother's home since his brother Joe went to the death house. Danny Brecker. He's somewhere. Hiding somewhere. Waiting to strike again. I've got to find him. Good morning, Mr. O'Hara. I'd like some oranges and potatoes. Good heavens, Mrs. Adams. What are you doing out in the street? I thought the police had detectives watching every one of you jurors that was on the Brecker case. Oh, they'd got a detective staying at my house, but I had to have some things for dinner, and I slipped out. Mother, can I have some candy? Yes, dear, of course you can. You just... Oh, Mother. Mother, what's the matter? Why don't you send to me? Sam! Sam! Huh? Quick, Mother. phone the police. Get a doctor. Mrs. Mother. Adams has been shot. Oh, I'm afraid she's dead. Yes, the killer has struck again. <laughs> Judge Wilson. Yes, are we? Judge, don't you think it'd be, well, safer with a killer still at large if you had those window curtains closed? Oh, that's not necessary. This apartment's on the 20th floor. Yeah, I know, Your Honor, but just the same, I... I'll answer it, sir. Hello? Yes, Judge Wilson is right here, Your Excellency. The governor's on the wire, sir. Here you are. Hello? Yes, Governor. Yes, of course you couldn't commute Joe Brecker's sentence. If you did a thing like that, even to save the rest of the jury, there'd be no more law and order. But look, Governor, don't you think it'd be wise for you to cancel your engagement to ride in the parade tomorrow? It'd be in an open car and a perfect target for any... <coughs> Judge! Judge Wilson! Governor! Governor! Judge Wilson has just been shot! He... He's dead! Shadow will continue with his adventure in just a moment. In the meantime, here is a message of particular importance to families throughout this area who supply their own heat. We are now in a period of the year when all fuels are put to their severest test. However, homeowners who use blue coal have nothing to worry about because blue coal, which is especially prepared for home use, is better qualified to meet sudden changes of weather than other fuels. During mild weather, blue coal banks for long periods with little attention. Then blue coal immediately responds with minimum draft, sending a uniform supply of heat throughout the living quarters of the home. Because blue coal burns down to a fine powdery ash, it is not only an economical fuel, but a particularly clean fuel as well. Furthermore, blue coal is an American product, mined in Pennsylvania by the Glen Alden Coal Company. Unlike a good many other fuels sold in this area, blue coal is prepared exclusively for home use. 
so that you can be sure of getting more uniform, more economical heat, blue coal is at color, so that you can identify it at a glance. There has been a big swing this winter to blue coal throughout this territory. Sales of blue coal this winter in the Middle Atlantic and New England states show an increase of 10.4% over sales for the same period a year ago. So take a tip from these blue coal families. For better, more economical heat, switch to blue coal tomorrow. Ask for it by name. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer, whose name will be found in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Work, Margo. Hello, Lamont. Take you long to get here. Let me help you out of the car. I was waiting for your call, Lamont. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for days. Where have you been? What are you doing? Well, the same thing the entire police force this city's been doing, Margo. Chasing a will of the wisp. Are you sure it's Joe Brecker's brother, Dan? Yes, there doesn't seem to be any doubt of it, but the police can't find him, and I haven't a single clue to go on. What do you know about I him? I looked up his record. He was shell shocked during the war in France. He was an expert marksman, a sniper. Society trained him to kill men. They told him they were enemies, that he should kill them off. And now, with a shell-shocked mind, he's remembering what society taught him. To kill. Yes. And another thing, for the people who've been through that experience, life is cheap. Yes, but these poor people he shot and killed, the jurors and the judge, they were only doing their duty, they're innocent. Yes, individually they're innocent, Margot. Individually we're all innocent, and yet, all guilty. Because this Danny, Joe Brecker's brother, is a product of our own folly. Teaching men to kill in time of war, yet expecting them to respect life in time of peace. Lamont, why did you want me to meet you here? Oh, I, I want you to do something for me, Margot. I want you to go into that brownstone house right over there. Joe Brecker's mother lives in the basement. Yes. Joe is scheduled to die at five o'clock. It's exactly ten minutes from now. All right, Lamont. I'll do it. Where will you be? I'll be with you, Margot. There's the shadow. The feeling Danny may come to his mother tonight, either just before or just after his brother dies. Hurry, you have less than ten minutes. Here's the house. I'll ring the bell. So, Mark, what shall I tell her? That I'm a reporter? Yes, but don't try to make her answer questions. I hear someone coming. Yes? What do you want? Mrs. Brecker, I'd like to speak to you. May I come in? I don't care. You can come in if you want to. Doesn't it matter? Nothing matters anymore. Nothing will ever matter again. I know you've been through a terrible ordeal these past days, Mrs. Brecker. How could you know what I've been through? How could anyone know? My one son a murderer and the other one... Goodness only knows what or where. Oh, I'm very sorry. If there's anything I can do... In three minutes, they'll be killing my son, Joe. There's nothing anyone can do. It's his brother, Daniel. I'm so worried about him. Why doesn't he come? Oh, why doesn't he come home? Ma. Oh, Danny. Yeah. Oh. I'd come. Joe said I shouldn't, but I had to come. I knew you'd want me home tonight. Oh, Danny. Danny, where have you been? What's Joe been making me do? i just been doing what Joe told me to do for him. Ma. Who's that girl there? What's she doing here? Oh, why, she, she's just a friend, Danny. Just a friend. Come to sit with me. She won't tell nobody you've been here, will she? Oh, no, no, Danny. She won't tell anyone. Ma, they're going to kill Joe in a oh, few minutes. Dear. Five o'clock. And then i got to go out and do one more thing for Joe. Look, it's almost time. Oh, no. No, Danny, no. You, you can't. I won't let you. Let go of me, Ma. No, no. Let go of me. Danny. i got to do what Joe told me. I gotta keep my word to Joe. No, no, Danny, listen to me. I know. I know who's been killing those people, shooting them. Oh, you've got to give yourself up, Danny. They won't hurt you. They didn't know. You didn't know what you were doing. Five o'clock. <laughs> it's time. It's time. Five o'clock. 
Joe's dead. <laughs> now I got to go back to the tower and do the last thing Joe wanted me to do for him. Danny Dukes, you've done enough harm. You keep out of this. Joe told me to do this. I got to. I can still hear a voice telling me to do it. Now you'll hear a voice telling you not to, Danny. Voice. I know. You're the shadow. Yes, Danny. And for your own sake, your mother's sake, Danny, Joe I... told me what to do with you. He knew you'd find me. That's why I got this hand grenade. Oh, Danny, go. I got my hand on a firing pin. I'm going to pull it out. Stop, Danny. I'm warning you. The voice came from there. In the corner. You told me to throw the grenade. Oh, my shadow. It's all right. I managed to pick up the grenade and throw it through the window into the court before it exploded. Oh, thank you. I don't mind saying that's the closest call a shadow ever had. Lamont, how long have you been here in your office? What happened? Were you able to trail Danny to his hiding place? No, by the time I got to the street after that hand grenade episode, he disappeared. But haven't you any idea where he went? Where that tower he mentioned might be? No, I've been working on this enlarged map of the Midtown section, trying to find some tall building, some tower Danny Brecker could use to hide to pick off the governor. Then he said something about a tower. He... It must be somewhere along the line of March of Today's Parade, Lamont. Margot, that's the Wardman Tower. But it isn't finished. They stopped work on it. it. It's nothing but a steel what frame. What could be a better place for a sharpshooter like Danny Brecker? There's no work going on there, just a watchman down on the street level. Margot, it's a long chance, but it may be the answer. Come on, there's a minute to lose. My car's downstairs, Lamont. I'll drive you over there. But what if he isn't there? What if he's somewhere else waiting to strike? In that case, Margot, I'm afraid we'll have a new governor of this state. <laughs> Just a couple of minutes now, Joe. Just a couple of minutes, and the governor's car will come along. And then I'll do the last thing you asked me to do, Joe. Wind velocity zero. Range 300 yards. He'll die quick, Joe. Like you died. Yeah. The governor's coming now, Joe. That's his automobile with all the flags on it. That's him, sitting in the back with all those fellas around him. I can pick him out. I won't miss Joe. <laughs> Danny. Danny Brecker. Listen to me. What was that? Who said that? Who laughed like that? Don't you recognize the shadow, Danny? But... Joe said... He said the hand grenade would fix it. You see, Danny, your brother was wrong. Put down that rifle, Danny Brecker. How did you find me way up here? How did you know I was hiding up here among these steel girders? Just like I used to hide in the trees in the war. That doesn't matter, Danny Brecker. All that matters is that you must not kill any more people. But I got to. Just one more, Shadow. Just one more. The governor. Down there in that car. I promised Joe. No, Danny. You will never keep that promise. Put down that rifle. Put it down, Danny. Lay it down on that steel girder and crawl back to the catwalk. All right. All right. I'll put it down. I'll put it down. Where are you, Shadow? I still got another grenade. Talk to me, Shadow. Say something so I can tell where you are. Crawl back to the catwalk, Danny. Crawl back to the catwalk, I say. No. No, I won't. I won't. You can't make me. Come here and get me if you want me, Shadow. I don't want to have to do that, Danny. Don't you come near me, Shadow. Don't you touch me. If you do, I'll drop this hand grenade. I'll throw it down here among all those people. I'll kill dozens of them. There. I'll pull the pin. I'll throw it. Danny. Listen to me. Hold that hand grenade, Danny. Hold it tight, Danny Brecker. 
See your fingers tighten about it. Your mind obeys mine. Do you hear me, Danny? Danny, hold it. Don't throw that hand grenade. Hold it. Hold it tight. Don't throw it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it, Danny. Don't drop it. Yes, Commissioner Weston. A high-powered rifle fell into the street, fell right in front of the governor's car. I'm glad no one was hurt. Mm-hmm. This is the 30th floor. This is where the bomb went off. Blew the guy to pieces. Good heavens, he must have had a time bomb that went off too quick. Any idea who it was? Yep. Yeah. They found an identification card and some newspaper clippings in his pocket on what was left of him. It was Danny Brecker, Joe Becker's brother. Oh. Well, I guess that's that. Don't suppose we'll ever know what really happened. Anyway, there's one consolation. Looks as if the shadow fell down on this case just as badly as we did. Not quite, Commissioner Weston. Oh, so you got here in time to take credit for this, eh, Shadow? There is no credit. No glory in the death of Danny Brecker, Commissioner Weston. He was a victim. A human instrument of destruction. Fashioned by mankind. That teaches men to kill their enemies in time of war... It expects them to forget their murderous art in time of peace. Danny Brecker was an enemy of society. A killer. But only because you and I and countless thousands made him one. No, Commissioner. There is no glory in this for you or the shadow or for any man. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. time, same station, Blue Coal, America's finest anthracite, again presents another thrilling adventure of The Shadow. Be sure to listen and be sure to burn Blue Coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. If you're planning a picnic, most everybody knows your biggest enemy is going to be ants. Those dreaded, six-legged, creepy crawlers that seem capable of lifting an entire pickup truck over their heads and walking away with it. If the pickup truck was edible, that is. I don't think they have much need for a four-wheel drive vehicle. Now, replace your picnic pest with, instead of an insect, a Sasquatch. That is apparently what happened to one family, for realsies. You can hear the entire story in this week's Mind of Marlar at mindofmarlar.com. Dealers present radio's strangest adventurer, The Shadow, mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today, Blue Coal brings you The Shadow's latest adventure, The White Legion. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, our last adventure with The Shadow for this season will begin. 
In the meantime, let's give a thought to the special heating problems of the spring season. Springtime means warm days, cool days, showers and uneven temperatures that bring cold and sniffles. So guard against uncertain weather. Burn blue coal in your heating plant, for blue coal protects against varying temperatures. Its harmless blue color is your guarantee of steadier, more dependable heat at less cost. So when you're buying fuel, insist on blue coal, Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. And listen for the shadow's important message at the end of the program. Smith, will you bring me those papers? Yes, Mr. Devins. Which one of you is William Devins? Right here. What can I do for you? We want you, Devins. Huh? Drop that ledger and get your hat. I've got you all covered. Set him against the wall. Oh, they've got masks on. Let go of me. What do you mean, barging into my office? Do as you're told. The White Legion wants you, Devons, and we go in wherever we have business. Move. Why, are you... Shut up. Now, the rest of you stand back. We're the White Legion, and Mr. Devons is going to learn a lesson he'll never forget. The prisoner, William Devons has confessed his part in a conspiracy against the sacred institutions of the White Legion. We give him to the all-high commander. Let the accused know his fate. Have you anything to say, Devins? I plead with you, don't kill me. I've got a wife and children. Silence. Ah, please, let me go. Give him another taste of the whip. Ah! That's better. Now secure the prisoner and stand him over the trap door. Don't, don't. Open the trap. Ah! Well, glad to find you in, Margot. And up. How about a little shopping with me this morning? I'd love it, Lamont. But isn't 10 o'clock a trifle early for you? Not this morning, at any rate. I've already paid a call on Commissioner Weston on my way over. Poor man's up to his neck as usual. What's the trouble now? Well, he's got quite a few things on his mind, one of them being William Devons. William Devons? Yeah. Isn't he the chief of the Bureau of Market? He was. But this morning, his body was found far out at sea, bound hand and foot, and apparently thrown from a ship. Oh. Peculiarly atrocious murder. Good heavens, Lamont. Any clues? So far, none. Another thing bothering the commissioner is the matter of this White Legion. The White yes. Legion? It's a band of men calling themselves Avengers of Injustice, who are taking the law into their own hands terrorizing, assaulting, and abducting, often in broad daylight and in the most unexpected places. Well, that's strange. I haven't seen anything about it in the papers. So far, it's been kept out of the papers. But in spite of that, enough has gotten out, so the demands are being made of Weston that something be done immediately. Poor Commissioner Weston. He seems to have his hands full. And on top of all that, young Alton Parker's life has been threatened. He's the assistant district attorney, you know. His life threatened? Why? Well, Parker's prosecuting the case against Red Collins, the gangster accused of killing Boss Houseman a couple of months ago. The trial comes up this week. Oh, it's all sinister politics, I suppose. Weston seemed to think the White Legion was mixed up in that, too. Then the White Legion has some connection with politics? It's possible. However, if we're going to start suspecting people, we could begin at the top of the city hall crowd and go to the bottom. It's Weston's problem, not ours. Want to go shopping with me? Why not? What are we going for? Oh, a little exercise and a few shirts. <laughs> Come along. Linens and embroidery the next aisle over, madam. Look, darling, don't you think this airplane luggage is just the thing for our trip south? Oh, it's nice, dear, but I can't seem to enthuse about this trip somehow, Alton. We've planned so many times before, and now this latest development. Oh, I, I'm terribly worried, dear. Oh, now, please, Helen. District attorneys are always getting threatening letters. They don't mean a thing. <laughs> yes, but... And, and Mr. Lawrence promised just as soon as this Red Collins case is finished, I can pack up and go. We start trial tomorrow. It can't last more than a week. I know. I, I'm sorry to be so spineless, but... Oh, Alton! What's the matter, dear? Those two men I saw when we came in the store, they're coming this oh, way. Helen, please don't oh, let your right, imagination... Parker, there's a gun in my pocket. Shut up and come oh. along. You keep your mouth shut, Mrs. Parker, and stand right here. What are you trying to do? The White Legion wants to ask you some questions, Parker. Is that so? Well, take this. Oh, Alton, stop it! Stop it! All right, stand back, the lot of you. This is an arrest. Drag him out, Pete. Get okay, back there. We're off. They arrested somebody. Must be his wife. Hey, she's fainted. Look out. There she is. Will you please clear the aisle, please? Get yeah, the aisle. Kill him. They put that guy in a car and drove off with him. The cop at the corner went after him. Come on, where did the train go? 
Oh, will somebody please look after her? I'd better phone the police. Yes, I'll take care of her. Is she all right, Margot? I think so. Lamar just fainted. I beg your pardon. This must be her husband's briefcase. Papers scattered all over. I'll pick them up. Here, Alton. let me help you. Alton. Oh, my husband. Save him. There, now. Save him. They've notified the police. Who is your husband? He's the assistant district attorney. Alton Parker. Alton Parker? Those men who took them away. They're from the White Legion. I heard them say it. Oh, please, please do something. Will you come to the first aid room, madam? They're sending over detectives. Oh, yes. Please, I... Oh, I feel so weak. Well, excuse me, Mrs. Parker. I'm Hartley Clay's, owner and publisher of The Globe. Is this your husband's briefcase? Yes. Well, yes, I'll, be, I'll be very glad to deliver it to the district attorney's office, if you say so. There may be valuable papers, you know. Oh, yes, if you will, please. Thank you, Mr. Clay. Now, if you come right this way, please, Mrs. Parker. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Clays. Oh, who are you? My name is uh, Mark Hanson. Oh, well, uh, what do you make of this? If what she says is true, it's more of the White Legion's handiwork. Oh, you think so? I understand they were mixed up in the murder of Boss Houseman. Oh, that's pure hearsay. There was no real evidence. Still, Red Collins is going to trial for shooting Boss Houseman, and Alton Parker is slated to prosecute. It all hangs together, doesn't it? Well, I suppose so. Anyway, I intend to take this matter up editorially in my paper this very afternoon... The Globe has kept away from the White Legion up to now. So much politics mixed up in it, you know. Yes, I know. Yes, but this is terrible. I'll see what Commissioner Weston is doing about it. Well, I must go along now. Oh, wait, let me see. Is that paper on the floor out of this briefcase? Yes. No. Seems to be nothing but a sales folder. <laughs> Special today. White goods sale. <laughs> oh, yes, I see. <laughs> well, uh, I'll get this briefcase down to the district attorney's office... Uh, glad to have met you, sir. Very glad to have met you, Mr. Clay. Oh, there you are, Margo. Sure right now? Yes, but suffering from shock, poor woman. Oh, this is an outrage, Lamont. You ought to do something. The shadow ought to do something. I imagine you're right. Hmm. Where did you get those papers? I think they fell out of Alton Parker's briefcase. And they're rather important, I believe. You see the title on them? Yes. Yeah. Evidence, the state versus Red Collins. But why are you... Oh, I'm beginning to see. Yes. The shadow is doing something about the White Legion, Margo. What's more, I expect to have a very busy afternoon. Hmm. It's a message from the commander, isn't it? Yeah, I've got it, Mr. Clays. S U N M A R 2 O one one. There you are, sir. I'll put it on your desk. Thank you. Oh, uh, see who that is at the door. Yes, sir. Telegram, Mr. Clay. Thank you. I'll take it. Thank you. A telegram for you, Mr. Clay. Telegram. Well, what can this mean? Oh yes. Congratulations on your splendid editorial in this afternoon's Globe. It was almost convincing. What? Signed, the shadow. What? The shadow. Stop trembling, you fool. Uh, but if the shadow is after... We'll take so... care of the shadow just as we take care of the rest of them. He can't bluff me. Uh, wait, the door's opening. Pardon the intrusion, Mr. Clays. Are you... Who is that? Who speaks? I am the one they call the shadow. He's here, in this room. I've heard of you and your tricks, shadow. Where are you? Here, in the shadows. But don't be alarmed because you can't see me. I've only come for a short visit, Mr. Clays. Why honor me with your presence? As a newspaper editor, I thought you might like to hear the news. What news? The White Legion is about to be exposed. The White Legion? Exposed? I presume you'll want to run an extra on that. Why, yes, of course. I'm sure I'll be very pleased. The fair-minded citizens of this city and state can force an expose of that organization. You sound like your own editorials, Mr. Clays. If you're insinuating that I have some connection with the White Legion... You're very much mistaken. I never insinuate, Mr. Clays. I simply wanted to keep you posted. The next time you hear my voice, Clays, be ready to run your extras. It will be the signal that the White Legion is doomed. <laughs> Before the shadow continues its adventure, I want to give you a message from blue coal dealers throughout the country. As announced earlier, this is the final shadow broadcast of the winter series. Blue Coal dealers take this opportunity to express their great appreciation for the many letters they have received praising these broadcasts. They are also deeply grateful to New England families who have favored Blue Coal with a volume of business which has created a sensation in the fuel industry in New England this winter. We are, of course, happy 
that so many families have learned through experience that blue coal, an American product, is Pennsylvania's finest anthracite. It is the best quality fuel that can be used. For not only is blue coal safe, clean, and convenient, it is economical, too. The Glen Alden Coal Company, who mine blue coal, have prepared it especially for home use. No wonder blue coal sales in New England have increased more than 28% this winter compared to the same period a year ago. You may be sure that the high standards of quality which have been responsible for this increase in business will be maintained at all times. So take a tip from blue coal families and for better, more economical heat, switch to blue coal tomorrow. Ask for it by name. Order a trial ton from your nearest blue coal dealer. His name is listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. Let me see those notes, Margot. What makes you think Hartnick Glaze is mixed up with this White Legion, Lamont? A little deductive reasoning, Margot. I've noticed that since this White Legion stuff is broken in the papers, Clay's paper, The Globe, has been deliberately playing it down. Clay's editorial policy seems to be that the atrocities of the White Legion have been greatly exaggerated. It does sound peculiar. Exactly. Clay seemed rather confused when I appeared to him this afternoon as the shadow. This may clean up matters. What have you got there? It's a copy I made of a memorandum that was on Clay's desk. Let's see. Oh, what in the world does it mean, these two words? Convocation Water Chapel. And then this string of letters and numbers. S-U-N-M-A-R-2-0-1-1. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> yes, it does. S-U-N is Sunday. M-A-R is March. Yes. And then 20 and 11, Convocation Water Chapel, Sunday, March 20th at 11. But that's today. Yes, probably at 11 tonight. But I have an idea that... The water chapel is the place where they're holding Alton Parker prisoner. We're going to find out. Bring the car and meet me in the block next to Clay's house at 8 o'clock, Margot. Yes. If Clay's is going to that meeting, we'll follow him. Slow down, Margot. I want to get too close to Hartley Clay's car. This fog rolling in will be lucky if we don't lose them entirely. Can you see their car through the field glasses, Lamont? Yes, it's turned down that side road toward the bay. There's a small shack on the edge of the water. The fog's getting heavier. makes it hard to see. Mm. That shack must be the place they call the water chapel. Yes. It's apparently right on the edge of the channel. It goes out to sea. Uh. You better stop here, Margo. Let's get out. All right, Lamont. There's a small inlet here. Yes. We can see better now. So that fog doesn't get any thicker. <laughs> There's a motorboat tied up the wharf. Three cars parked nearby. Wait. Clay's and the man with him are getting out. They're going toward the shack. I don't see any light in the place. Someone's opening the door. Yes, there's a figure dressed in a long white robe and a mask with a white cap on his head. Oh. They've gone inside. Blast that fog. is getting so thick I can't see the place any longer. What are you going to do now? Somehow I've got to get out there. And I'd just as soon not go by the front door. Oh, uh, look, Lamont. This old rowboat lying in the inlet. Good idea, Margaret. There seems to be only one oar, but I can paddle with that. This inlet apparently leads down into the channel. Oh, Lamont, please be careful. There's a terrible current rushing out to sea, and in that fog you won't be able to see anything. Oh, I'll be all right, but if you don't hear from me by six o'clock in the morning, get in touch with Commissioner Weston. Give him the location of this place and warn him to bring a few men with him. Yes. If I get what I expect, I won't need him. What do you expect to get? Enough evidence to wipe out the White Legion from top to bottom. All right, Parker, get yourself ready to meet the judgment of the White Legion. What judgment? The judgment of death. I'll be back for you in a minute. Judgment of death. Walter Parker. Who? Who's that? Quiet. I am the shadow. I've come to help you. The shadow? Keep your chin up and do what they tell you. We'll see this through. Careful. Step out, Parker, and follow me. This meeting of the comrades of the White Legion will come to order. First defender, present the accused. 
The accused stands before you all, High Commander. First recorder, the prisoner, Alton Parker, having committed acts against the order of the White Legion, acts that we consider detrimental to the good of our city, we have signed his order of punishment. With the consent of the comrades, we give him into your hands. Let the accused know his fate. Alton Parker, have you anything to say? Yes, yes I have. I was to have prosecuted a murderer tomorrow, a man known as Red Collins, who by your help and instigation killed Al Hausman, your political rival. It's common knowledge that this white legion of yours sides with a party in power at City Hall. And all your sanctimonious chatter about the good of our city doesn't fool anybody. Prosecuting criminals is my job. And if that prosecution endangers the lives and reputations of one political clique or another, it's no concern of mine. Well, it's short, Parker. You have one more minute. I know why you're getting rid of me. Because your white legion is mixed up in the worst scandal this state has ever known. And I know what that scandal is. If you, with your robes and masks, knew what that scandal is, you wouldn't be members of this gang. You'd ask your leaders what kind of money-grafting racket they're running. Ask him, the one that sits there on his mock throne. Who tore off my mask? You fool, get back. Here it is, Commander. The strap broke. That's odd. I could have sworn I felt someone tear it. Come to order, men. Stand the accused over the trap. You are sentenced to die, Alton Parker. You will pay for this, all of you. There's a power beyond your reach that'll make you pay. If you mean the shadow. <laughs> when the time comes, we'll deal with the shadow in a way he won't forget. Silence. Stand ready at the trap. Give me that rope. I want to dispose of Mr. Parker myself. Ready? The trap is ready. Good. <laughs> in another half hour, Alton Parker's body will be far at sea. The vengeance of the White Legion is now completed. We've called the Shadow's Bluff. Commissioner Weston speaking. Good morning, Commissioner. Oh, it's you, Shadow. This morning they're bringing Red Collins to trial for the murder of Boss Hausman. Do you think I don't know about... Commissioner, this is urgent. When the trial starts, have a man stationed at each entrance to the courtroom. Don't let anyone in or out without your authority. And wait yourself by the main entrance. I think you'll have a surprise. What's the idea? I'll do it if you tell me what... I can't tell you anything more now, Commissioner, except this. If you don't do it, you'll regret it the rest of your life. Well, I don't know what you're planning, but it better be good. Oh, it'll be good, Commissioner. I'll promise you that. It'll be good. request that this man who calls himself Red Collins be reprimanded for his insults to me, the district attorney. Proceed with the case, please. Very well. Collins, who paid you to murder Boss Houseman? Defense objects, Your Honor. Objection sustained. All right, Your Honor. Perhaps you'll answer this question, Collins. Were you ever a member of the White Legion? I was not. I told you that once before already. Defense requests that the prosecutor stick to the case in hand. The murder of Al Hausman. The case in hand, as the defense and everybody else knows, goes far beyond the prosecution of this gangster. Why, that's... Order. 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 I intend to prove, Your Honor, that this man Collins killed Al Hausman. But that Collins acted under the instructions of the notorious gang known as the White Legion. The same gang who caused the mysterious disappearance of my able assistant, Mr. Elson Parker. Confine yourself to the case at hand. The district attorney seems to have some trouble doing that. Yeah. Look at this note, Collins. Do you deny sending that to Houseman the day before he was killed? Sure. I wrote the letter and sent it to him. I told you that once already, too. Why? Why did you write him such a threatening letter? To scare him into paying me the money he owed me. That's why. I told you that once, too. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Collins is lying. Who's that? He can neither read nor write. Who is speaking? I demand that he identify himself. Is there someone in this courtroom who wishes to be sworn as a witness? Where are you? 
Who are you? I am the shadow, Judge Rusko. <laughs> I have some unsworn testimony that may interest you. The men who paid Red Collins to commit murder are in this room. They are the leaders of the White Legion. They have secretly milked the city treasury of over ten million dollars in the past three years. Their hands are red with blood. I protest at this ridiculous procedure. One of those men is sitting here in this courtroom. His name has been honored in the past. But he is a murderer. Silence, I tell you. Who is it? Who is it? Tell us who it is. His name is Hartney Clay's. Hartney Clay. A sanctimonious crusading editor who used his influence and position to learn the movements of the law and keep suspicion away from himself. If there is any further disturbance, I will order the courtroom clear. Judge Rusko. Yes, Mr. I insist this part be concluded. If this, this shadow accuses me, let him present evidence. The evidence is ready. <laughs> order, order. You are making a fuss of this court of justice, whoever you are. If you don't stop, I will suspend the hearing. No, no, let no, the shadow no, talk. No, yes, no, no. I have talked enough. I now call your attention to the young man who is just entering the door with Commissioner Weston. Parker. It's Alton oh, Parker. It's Parker. It's Parker. The assistant district attorney that disappeared. I demand the suspension of this trial. No. This trial won't be suspended until I present the evidence for conviction. You couldn't find that evidence, could you, Mr. Clays? It wasn't in my briefcase. Killing me wouldn't have destroyed it, because it's right here. After I was kidnapped in the store, these papers were sent to Commissioner Weston. Enough evidence to send Red Collins to the electric chair, to put an end forever to this murdering gang of hypocrites who call themselves the White Legion. I order the arrest of Hartney Clays. Commissioner Weston. Right here, Mr. Parker. Stick out your hands, Clay. You realize what you're doing? Yes, I'm slipping a pair of handcuffs on you, mister. You'll be locked up and charged with the murder of William Devons, among others. Go to it, Parker. Run out the right hand. Get him out. I relinquish the bit. Just a moment, sir. Now I move a suspension for the presentment of new charges to the grand jury. Those charges will show that the city funds have been tampered with. They will name the six leaders of the White Legion, including its all-high commander the brains and moving force of its murderous atrocities. The man who sits on the bench at this moment, Judge Matthew Rusko. Yes, 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 is responsible for this triumph of justice. The one who calls himself the Shadow. My fellow citizens, I thank you. But let me remain a voice. A voice that wakes the guilty conscience, brings terror to the wrongdoer, and comfort to the oppressed. Know me only... As the shadow. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert. But before we hear Mr. Barclay, we want to remind you that at the close of the program, the shadow himself has an interesting message for you. Be sure to listen. And now, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken. And now a word about heating hot water this summer. Many listeners have had the experience of preparing to take a shower only to discover the hot water supply has been exhausted. Now, this condition should not exist in any home. There can always be an unlimited supply of hot water when you heat it with the efficient and up-to-date hot water tank heaters that manufacturers are turning out today. These heaters are still known in many communities as bucket-a-day or pot stoves. Their cost is trifling, even when installed with automatic draft regulators which make their operations semi-automatic. They guarantee a generous supply of really hot water at a cost of about one-third present gas bills. I suggest that you ask your blue coal dealer about this hot water heating equipment. He'll be very glad to quote a price on the size best suited to your requirements. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that interesting message we promised you. The part of Lamont Cranston and the shadow 
has been played by one of the most distinguished figures in the theater today, Mr. Orson Welles, famous for his production of Shakespeare in Modern Dress, a director of the Mercury Theater, producer of Broadway hits like Julius Caesar and The Shoemaker's Holiday. Mr. Welles, still a very young man, is making for himself a unique place in the field of dramatic art. We have been indeed fortunate in having Mr. Wells on our shadow programs. Now, I know all of you would like to hear a few words from Mr. Wells. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Words can hardly express my great enjoyment in doing this program for you. And now, before I leave you, I want to thank our sponsors, Blue Coal, for giving me the opportunity of doing this show. I want to thank our cast for the wonderful work they've done throughout our entire season. And above all, I want to thank you, our listeners, for your loyalty. We all hope you've enjoyed listening to the shows as much as we have playing them. You know, in the theater, we can see our audience. We're able to tell how well we're received by the applause we get. But unfortunately, we have no way of knowing how much you've enjoyed us over the air. Wait, Orson. May I make a suggestion? I certainly, Agnes Moorhead, or should I say Margot Lane. <laughs> there is a way. If you've enjoyed this program and would like to let Mr. Wells and all of us know about it... Simply phone your nearest blue coal dealer and tell him so tomorrow morning. Tell him how much you've enjoyed the adventures of the shadow. A very fine idea, Agnes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, good night and goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wells. And let's all take Agnes Moorhead's suggestion and give the cast the volume of applause they deserve. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow morning. Tell him how much you've enjoyed the adventures of the shadow and that you'd like the shadow programs to resume again in the fall. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the persons named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves old-time radio or the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me and follow me on social media through the Weird Darkness website. WeirdDarkness.com is also where you can listen to free audiobooks I've narrated, get the email newsletter, visit the store for creepy and cool Weird Darkness merchandise, you can find other podcasts that I host. Plus, it's where you can find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression, addiction, or thoughts of harming yourself or others. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Weird Darkness's Retro Radio. Retro Radio